the, the smaller ones uh, have been some of the ones where I've experienced the Lord the strongest. And uh, so I'm, hey, he normally has something really special for us when that's going on. So I'm really, really, really excited. And um, I know Asia, um, she's one of our students in the School of Revival. And she was actually, she was feeling something as well um, for tonight. I'm just going to let her share what she was feeling and pray into it. So I was hearing from the Lord, and we were praying in the intercessors group, and we just kept hearing wait on the Lord, and it confirmed through like three separate scriptures, so it was just really good. So Father, we just come before you, God. Huh? We just humble ourselves, Father. We love you so much, and that love, oh, that love is so deep, God. We thank you that your word says that if we draw near to you, God, you'll draw near to us, Father. So we just... We wait for you, Father. We seek nothing else but your face. Father, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We want you, God. We want you more than we want anything, Lord God. There's nothing more important more important than you, God. Your loving kindness is better than life, Father God. So more than anything, God, we just ask that you would respond, God, because we are here for you. You would respond to us, Father. Make your glory real to us tonight, God. Make your love real to us tonight, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Father God, just to explode here, Father. We, we, we keep, we come together because we say we seek revival, God, but we seek you, Lord. We seek more of you, Father God. We ask for your glory just to come here, for your fire to fall in this place, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are just a good dad. You're a good dad, God, and you want you want this time with us, Lord. We just thank you for it, God. We just thank you. We love you, Jesus. Well, let's just stand up into this. Um, oh, we engage you tonight, Father. We we do. We we come. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we come here to meet one person. <laughs> we we just come here to meet you. We are waiting here for you. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting here for you, Jesus. You're the one. Yeah, we're so grateful, we're so honored that we get to come and uh, just meet with you face to face. Uh, Lord, that's too special that we, that we can really do that. We love you tonight. Uh, we, <laughs> we desire to touch a special place in your heart that we have not touched before. Um, <laughs> we desire to bless you. We see you, Lord. We see you, Jesus. Yes. We've come to give you glory. We've come to give you honor. We've come to give you worship. Oh, deep cries out to deep. Oh, deep cries out to deep. Oh, deep cries out to deep at the sound of your voice, Lord. Oh, call out those deep places, those deep things, Lord, as we come and give you glory. We come and give you honor. We come to give you worship. Oh, deep cries out to deep. Oh, deep cries out to deep. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Father. Let our deep places call out to your deep places tonight, Father. The sound of your voice. Hallelujah. 
here we go.
to deep cries out to we cry out we cry out to you jesus deep cries out to deep cries out to deep cries out to deep cries out so we cry out we cry out to you jesus oh we cry out lord Come and take over, come and overwhelm us. Oh, 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 wave after wave, Lord. Oh, I was resting today and the Lord showed me a huge wave a huge wave overtaking us tonight. <laughs> and you know what he told me? He said, don't fight the wave. Because sometimes a big wave can be really scary and it can take you under. But the Lord just told me, he said, don't fight the wave, just flow, just flow, just flow with the wave, flow with the wave. It'll take you to shore and it'll bring you back out. It'll take you to shore, it'll bring you back out. So Father, we flow with that wave tonight, Father. We don't fight you, we just flow with you, God. We trust you in those deeper places that you're taking us, Father. Ooh. Wave after wave, wave after wave, wave after wave. Oh. Wave wave after wave wave after wave wave after wave we trust you lord in wave after wave wave after wave wave after wave we trust you lord in wave after glory in wave after wave in wave after wave in wave after wave of your presence oh we trust you Lord oh we trust you Lord to take us out deeper He's so good. again you unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies to all my fears are gone I'm no
have chosen me Love has called my name I've been born again Into your family And your blood flows through my veins I'm no longer a slave slaves father we're your children we're your sons and daughters oh let that sink in oh yeah 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 oh we 
no longer have to fear a thing Oh, we're no longer slaves to the enemy We're your child, we're your child, God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God Declare that over yourself tonight I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave I am a child of God. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I just see a seal in the spirit. He's sealing. It's the king's seal. He's sealing on us tonight. That imprint of the Father. Mm. We allow you, Father, to do that tonight. Mm. Thank you, Father. You're so good. Thank you, Lord. Mm. thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father to you. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I am loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're.
We lift you up. We lift you up. 
this moment, Lord, we lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up. We say you are good. You are good. You are good, Lord. Oh, you never stop, never stop loving us. You are good. You are good. You are good. Oh, just tell him tonight. We love you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. You're such a good father. You're such a good father. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. In this moment, we honor you. Your kingdom come quickly, your will be done the same, our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom.
settle here, Lord. Let heaven come. Let heaven come. Let heaven come.
of your glory and your presence, Lord. Yeah, Lord, we need it. Uh, heaven to come into our lives even more. We let it come in. We invite it to come into our lives even more where we have not been letting it. We say those places, we invite heaven in. Heaven, uh, we let you into our lives in new ways. Uh, we don't want there to be a place in our life that heaven is not touching, that heaven is not invading. In our thought life where heaven is not uh, touching us in some way. We say this all the time in the school, but if it's not too good to be true, then it's probably not God. We receive heaven's reality over our lives. Heaven. <laughs> there is no sickness in heaven. There is no disease in heaven. There is no discouragement in heaven. <laughs> There's just life, 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 life. That's what it is for you. That's what's available for you. Yeah. We say you're not going to leave this place the same way you came in tonight. Heaven invading you. Web streamers, heaven invading your house tonight. Invading right where you're at. Heaven coming in. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Mm. Jesus. Yes. yes, God. We just thank you for heaven tonight. We just thank you that heaven is in this place, Lord God. And we just come into agreement right now. And we just ask just for your presence to just increase upon us, Lord God, upon this place, upon this region, Lord God, that just more heaven would come, Lord God. We want it so thick we can't walk through it, Jesus. And Lord God, I just... I just declare and decree right now, Heavenly Father, just a renewed innocence, Lord God, an innocence over your church, over the churches in this region, over this nation, Lord God, that we would just come to you, just come to you as your children, Lord God, just as little children in awe of Daddy God. So we just say that you're the best daddy we could ask for, Heavenly Father, and we just come before you right now in awe of you, just to be with you you tonight and we just lay it all down anything that holds us back from just pursuing you and seeing your face Lord God that we just lay it all before you and we ask you to come and rest on the altars of our little lives Lord God because we love you and it's all about you Jesus we just love you amen it's awesome <laughs> yeah you're awesome God you're awesome. Let's just take another. Let's just take another thirty seconds and tell him how good he is. Well, I'm just out of your mouth. Let's not let this moment pass by. Uh, we're trying to release something to him that would touch his heart. Oh, we bless you tonight. We, uh, you're deserving of it, Lord. You're deserving of more than we could ever give. But we, we bless you tonight. <laughs> I. Uh, he might not be getting it anywhere else tonight, but he's going to get it here. We bless you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Just another 10 seconds telling him, uh, let your heart touch his heart. We bless you. <sighs> we bless you, Jesus, on the throne. <laughs> Shake us, God. We want you. Mm. We bless you. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you're too deep. You're too big. <laughs> you you are too good in our lives. <laughs> we we just love you. We don't. Isn't it so good? We don't have to bless him because it's. That's what we're supposed to do. We just can't help ourselves when we realize how good. <laughs> oh, you're too good. 
And you're too beautiful. We love you, Lord. Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. He's awesome. <laughs> we just stay there. We stay with our hearts open toward him. Even, uh, even as the worship band uh, is ending, we stay, we stay in an attitude of worship. Uh, how can we respond any other way? We love you, Lord. Uh, we, we bless the worship team, too. You guys did awesome. Margo, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was such a, a gift of worship and high praise. I really love uh, hearing Margo um, lead worship. It's awesome. So anyways, welcome, welcome guys, welcome to extended meetings. We're contending for something here, and so thank you guys for joining us. We're contending for something more in our lives. Uh, we're, we've not been satisfied with uh, just going after God uh, one day a week, then we weren't satisfied with two days a week. We've, uh, we're trying to lay hold of something more, and uh, so we're contending for revival uh, contending for personal revival. Anybody want that? Yeah. <laughs> One person. Okay, good. That's so good to hear. Yeah, we want it. Yeah. This is the revival center, so you can get crazy. Uh, this is Todd Bentley's house, so uh, you can get just as crazy as you'd like to about God. Um, he's he's one of the hungriest people I know for him. He, he won't let anything stop him. I love that. Anyways, welcome web streamers. We love you guys. Bless you guys for being with us. And I uh, wanted to invite Pastor Darren up. Pastor Darren to share something. Woo! Hallelujah. Again, tomorrow night we're going to be here from 7 on. And then uh, Saturday night, all worship from 7 o'clock till however late we decide we want to go, so uh, come out those nights, so, uh, whoo, can you guys say 20,000, 20,000, no, we're not taking the offering, that's how many people got saved today in Pakistan, <laughs> 20,000 people answered the altar call, I mean, give or take, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, but that's awesome. Todd is so psyched. Just looking at the pictures that he's sending, he is so in his element. He's like glowing from ear to ear. So uh, he said with having that many people in the same area, uh, the Wi-Fi just wasn't working, and so he couldn't do a video. So um, pardon me while I sit down and talk you through some of these pictures that he sent me right before we sat down to do worship and said, here, just do a slideshow really quick tonight. So uh he, he wanted you to see some of the pictures of the crowds and the, and the ministry time he had today. Um, notice the very flowery Pakistani carpet they've got on the stage. Hallelujah. I'm going to get out my phone really quick. because he, he gave me some testimonies for some of these pictures too, so excuse the impromptuness of uh, this little home picture display that we got going on, but... Uh, it's so exciting to see this stuff happen in real life. If you saw the uh, the video he did the other day, they went to this open field, and uh, it didn't look that big. And they're like, well, we're going to take a bulldozer to all those trees and knock down that fence, and we're going to take out that over there. And that was yesterday. It wasn't The field wasn't even ready. And so uh, I guess in countries like Pakistan, you can just go ahead and decide you're going to knock down some trees and make a field for a million people. But... Uh, Anyway, so these are just some of the pictures of of, uh, of today's event. Um, if you noticed on Facebook, he mentioned that if you're praying anywhere between, what did he say, 9 and 1, I think? 11 and 2, that's when they're in prime crusade mode. So once you guys wake up in the morning, if you guys want to start praying, but 11 to 2, our time is when he's kind of in prime crusade mode. And so uh, um, this is just some of the pictures that he sent me today of some of the stuff. Hallelujah. I'm looking on my phone to make sure I'm not missing some of the testimonies that go with some of these pictures. So we'll get to those here shortly. There's a few people there. Hallelujah. You're a 
asking the wrong guy. <laughs> this one here on the text, he said this was a deaf mute that was that was healed. Hallelujah. And then, um, of course, this is a picture he kind of had doubled up, but uh, the guy next to her was blind. Um, and uh, I don't know if it was fully restored or partially restored, but the blind man was healed as well. Hallelujah. This one... Again, sorry. He just sent me random photos all day long, and so I gotta, I gotta read here to see what these are. It says this Muslim lady uh, came to me and said, "I have a demon that eats my flesh," and he said, "We cast it out in front of thousands of people." This is a closer version of it. This boy here got saved on the streets in one of the one of the street outreaches they were doing. And then uh, the team actually prayed for this little boy. He's been blind since birth, and the and the team got to pray for that boy, and he was healed. So uh, so good things are happening in Pakistan. In addition to the twenty thousand people that got saved today, and. Uh, uh, the you know the the rumors are buzzing. Everybody's going to be coming out in bigger crowds tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. So, again, when you guys wake up in the mornings, be sure just to pray for Pakistan, pray for Todd, and they're having he, they're having a blast. And like I said, he is glowing from ear to ear. He's he's loving every minute of it. It was probably three o'clock in the morning. He's still texting like, "Oh my God, you should." So uh, hopefully we'll have some video tomorrow. Just uh, he's going to see if he can work out a way to get his own private little Wi-Fi uh, signal, maybe a little. You know, a little Wi-Fi box he can put in his pocket or something. So maybe we'll have some real video for you tomorrow night to keep you updated. But uh, stay tuned. We'll see what's happening. But just just really be in prayer about that. And uh, so we're really excited. Amen. Everybody happy? Well, I'm going to shut up now. Stephen, you ready to go, my man? <laughs> Red eye. How y'all doing? Oh, man. I'm feeling good tonight. You guys feeling good tonight? Is there anybody in here that has cancer tonight? Anybody at all that is related to somebody, particularly with fibroid cancer? Anybody at all? Because I felt the anointing of cancer today. Um, I was actually talking uh, with a gentleman through Facebook who contacted me out of nowhere. And right about the time I got the word of knowledge for cancer, strong cancer, particularly fibroid cancer, he sent me a video in which fibroid cancers were being healed. Like the moment I got the word. So I believe that someone very soon is going to be healed of a large growth, even the size of like a grapefruit in their body. Um, so if that fits a description of anybody that you know, we're going to be here tomorrow. Who? I just felt like as if someone just struck me right on the forehead with oil just now. Wow. But we're going to see more cancers healed in this place. We're breaking into it, you guys. Um, we saw five medically verified healings of cancer in Fresno. Oh, and uh, we're going to see that here. We saw a miracle last night. You, if you, who was in the meeting last night? Anybody? Let me see your hands high. Wave them. So most of you were in the meeting last night. We had a girl come up at the end of the meeting last night. She couldn't be here tonight because uh, she's working. But we had a girl come up at the end of the meeting last night, and she wanted me to pray for her friend. So I began to pray for her friend, but I began to get a word of knowledge for her. And I felt like this weird sort of sensation um, in the ear, but like going deep into the ear, this weird kind of pain, but a weird sensation. I, I didn't think it was deafness, but something to do with the ear that went deep and caused a lot of pain, like burning pain. And then right about the time um, I asked her, I said, you got something wrong with the ear? And then my brain went from identifying ear to calling out which ear it was, because I knew which, which ear it was by what the Lord was letting me feel in my body. Right about the time I went to say, is it in your left like this, her hand went up at the same time and pointed to her left. And it was like, it wasn't anything that I did. It was a real testimony to her. She goes, 
oh my gosh, just like that. She was like looking in a mirror. And um, I said, I feel the fire. And I laid hands on her ear, you guys. And she felt the fire. You were there for that one, weren't you? You saw that. You see that testimony on Facebook today? It's kind of going viral. She's had like 40 comments on it and approaching like, you know, hundreds of likes, you know, and (laughs) it's a real testimony. You guys remember when I said last night that I believe there are going to be stories that came out of last night's meeting? That's a story, man, that's circulating around Facebook right now. And here's why it's such a big deal. The fire God went through her body last night, and she is completely healed of a condition, you guys, that she'd had since childhood, since a little child. She said, Stephen, you don't know how many doctors I've been to. You don't know how many medications I've been on. It's some sort of an issue that she's had since childhood with her glands, her ear, um, even her breathing. It affects so many different things in her body, but she says she has constant inflammation, burning pain all through her glands, up into her ear. Um, and the way she described it to me, it was as if the Lord like recreated the glands, which struck a chord with me because I was believing for creative miracles last night, right? It's like her. It's like something was born not correct in this lady's biology, and God released His creative fire last night, rearranged the molecules, rearranged the cells. Give the Lord a mighty shout! And she is completely healed, you guys. She is blown away. She's never walked today like she walked today ever in her whole life. She's never experienced what it's like to not have debilitating pain. And just, she says it affects her voice when she sings. She says it affects so many different things. You know how there's some of those conditions you have? It's like here, but it affects so many different things. It was like one of those, and she's completely set free. Amen? That was last night, in the anointing last night. And uh, I'm believing um, for that uh, for your husband. I'm believing for your husband. I want to know when he goes to the doctor to have that checked out. Um, We called out her husband last night by a specific word of knowledge. I said, someone has a brain injury. And then I asked him, does the number 36 mean anything to you? And he said, I was, you said he was diagnosed at 36 years old. And the Lord also was calling out all these things with your daughter too. I called out scoliosis and your daughter had that. How's your daughter doing by the way? You haven't got the chance to talk to her? Is she in the area? She lives in this area? Okay. If she can come to the meeting sometime, I'd love to pray for her because Lord definitely had her um, had her number. If I could have everybody stand in the room right now. Oh. We're going to enter it back in right now. You ready? Go ahead and close your eyes. Put out your hands. Assume the position. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the glory of the Lord in the room tonight. We thank you for the healing anointing that's residence and is res- the residue of heaven is here tonight. We thank you, Lord God, like the children of Israel experienced when the cloud was overhead. You came and you left a little substance, Lord. You left the manna. You left a physical reality, Lord, from the eternal reality, from the spiritual reality. And I'm asking in part that tonight, Lord, under the cloud of your glory. Lord, as you ministered to that young lady last night, as you ministered to many people last night, Lord God, releasing a creative realm of God, I'm asking that you administer that same realm tonight, Lord God. I'm asking for, like we've been saying, personal revival in every person's heart. Personal revival, Lord God, in every family that's represented here, Lord God. I believe we are touching something, Lord God. We are touching something wonderful, something extraordinary. There's a momentum, Lord God, and we just step into it again tonight by faith. Come on, saints. I want to invite you right now. Step into it tonight once again by faith right now. Step into it right now by faith right now. Release waves of your glory tonight, Lord. Release waves of your fire tonight, Lord God. Oh, we want to be revived, Lord God. We know that we are revived, but we want to experience the revival of what it means to be saved, of what it means to walk under the cloud, of what it means to be in Christ. Let every man, woman, and child here tonight, Lord God, be in Christ, have the reality, the experiential reality 
of in Christ, in his glory tonight. We pray for fire, Lord God, on these people tonight. We pray for fire, Lord, on every body, on every mind, Lord God. We pray for fire in lungs tonight. Fire in glands tonight. If you're a lady um, and you have issues in your glands tonight, I want you to come to the front right now. If you have a thyroid condition, just step forward right now. Come on. Is that you? Glands. Anything to do with your glands? If you're a lady, the prophecy. Oh, having trouble talking again. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy where he released power to recreate one lady's lungs. He'll release it again. Ah. It's heavy glory, heavy glory, Jesus' name, right through those glands. <sighs> Touch in Jesus' name. We thank you for that anointing, Lord God. We thank you for touching my dear sister's glands. You don't have a heart condition, do you? Do you know anybody that has a heart condition? Your grandfather, specifically a heart condition? Has he had heart attacks? Place it was a heart valve. A heart valve. Lord, we pray for that grandfather in Jesus' name. Release healing in that heart. I can feel it right now, Lord God. We pray a recreative miracle. Recreate the heart, Lord, and recreate the glands. Oh, the glory's all over you. <laughs> there you go. Just breathe it in. Ooh, that's fire. That's living fire. Hallelujah. I could, I could prophesy over you right now, but I'm not going to. <laughs> This, this girl right here, man, she just draws me into the prophetic anointing. It's so strong on her, I feel drawn towards it. I feel like just rattling off the prophetic word right now. But sometimes just because you can doesn't mean you should. Oh, right now, Lord, all glory through those glands. <laughs> Loose power, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh. Now, right when I did that, I felt pain go, or, or heat go through my stomach. Do you need a miracle in your stomach? you need healing in your stomach? Go ahead and put your hands right there. In the name of Jesus right now, release healing in that stomach right now. Release healing in that stomach right now in Jesus' name. Glory, 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 glory. Is there a lady in here right over there that has floaters in your eyes? Issues in your eyes? See that? I pointed over there. Come here. Both of you, come here. We release that glory right now. Bam, bam, bam. Is Vanessa here tonight? Vanessa's not here tonight, is she? Keep hearing Vanessa. Someone named Vanessa is going to be healed. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Oh, floaters. Ah. <laughs> Bam. Oh. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Jesus. All floaters go. Is there someone that has a, there's somebody in here that has a specific condition affecting, I believe, your left eye, strong in your left eye? Is that you? Is that astigmatism, or what exactly is that? Um, LASIK surgery, and it went bad. It was that eye you had laser surgery on. I could actually feel an incredible amount of pain on the one side of the eye. I was probably feeling the laser touch your eye. You know, I can feel people's surgeries they've been through. Did you know that? The Lord can allow me to feel the knife. Because there's no, um, the Lord can bring me into any time period whatsoever right now in this time. And he can allow me to feel it. I've felt surgeries that people have been through 30 years ago. And I pointed right to their part of their knee where the scars were. And I said, you, they cut here, here, and here. And then they lifted up their pant leg and there were three cuts right where I said. They said, how did you know that? Did the Lord speak that to you? Did the Lord show that to you in a vision? I said, no, it feels like someone just cut me on my knee right there. I'm invited into your pain with my gift. I'm invited into your suffering. And it's actually a gift of love because we have not a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, the feelings of our pains. And why is this that it says in Hebrews 6? It says so that he might be a merciful and a compassionate high priest. So, Lord, I just pray, Lord, where there's been pain, where there's been suffering, release healing, Lord. Release healing, Lord. You've had problems with your, uh, with your, this part of your body down here? I can feel it right now. To um, 
because of the abuse from drugs and alcohol, it's hard for me to um, pass my bowels. I just heard the name Ann. The name Ann. Is there an Ann in the room right now? Ann? Is your name Ann? Come here right now, sweetie. Do you need a miracle in this part of your body too? Your reproductive organs? I'm just going to call it out. Here, wait one second. I've been to the doctor with it, but there's something going on. See that? Lord just spoke it to me, the name Ann, right in my right ear. That's the angel speaking right in my right ear. And it was right when I was calling out this word in these reproductive organs. We're hitting the next level, Lord, right now. The Lord told me in Africa last year I would begin at some point, a glory realm would come on my ministry, and I'd be able to get names and conditions, and I'd be able to go three levels deep many times. Right? Three levels deep. You guys, I'm telling you right now, there is a fresh release. Could you guys just stand with me right now? I believe this realm is going to come on some of you right now. I believe this is going to come on some of you right now. I believe there's people in the meeting right now that are going to get a name and are going to get a condition right now. Lift your hands high into the... Into the <laughs> I'm starting to talk like these glory guys. Lift your hands high into the cloud. <laughs> oh, I'm serious, you guys. I see like a glory cloud over the meeting. Just stick your hands up high and say, Lord, right now, give me the name and give me the condition right now. Oh, who are in Jesus' name? We thank you for healing, Lord, right now. We thank you for healing in Anne's body right now. Whoa, whoa. Now, Anne, you're not connected to the Vanessa, are you? Vanessa, I keep hearing Vanessa. If somebody knows a Vanessa that needs a miracle in their body, they better get them to these meetings. I hear Vanessa. The Lord is calling you, Vanessa. I speak out right now. Come to the meeting. Ho, do you have anything right now? The Lord give you anything? One, one second. I heard somebody named Steve and like a sciatic nerve. Steve. Is there somebody named Steven in here or Steve? Ho, anybody at all? Anybody know a Steven? Just wave your hand at me if you know a Steven. Oh, you know a Steven? Oh, that could hurt his back. Shakalabaya. Come here, sweetie. Sometimes, like I shared last night, the word of knowledge is sometimes just to cut and divide. The word of knowledge is a function of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the living word. And sometimes it'll just cut and divide, and it will divide people out, and it will separate people. So if you could just come over here and minister to her. Of course, pray for Steve, but also minister. Just go over there. Okay, go over there. You go over there, sweetie. And I want you to turn around just like this. Sorry, I have to do as I see it, right? I can only do those things which I see. There you go. Whoa, there's a lot of glory over there. <laughs> Who else? Did you get a name? Anybody get a name? Anybody else get a name or a, a condition or, or just at least two details? I want two words of knowledge that are paired. Go ahead. If you haven't received a word right now, go ahead and lift your hands right now. Lift your hands right now. Close your eyes. I know I'm weird and people don't ever do this in meetings, but I'm doing it. <laughs> you did get a name, didn't you? You see? I can feel it. I can feel your name. I don't know how I can feel a name. It's weird, but go ahead. Just say it right now. Joe. Joe. Is there a Joe in the meeting right now? I'm going to not forget that. Ho, oh, is there a Joe? Are you Joe? You were raising your hand. Does Joe mean anything to you? Ho, oh, anybody, Joe. Is it the name J-O? You got a brother named Joe. Did you get anything else with Joe? Actually, in his reproductive, like he might be, uh, what do you call it? Um, Does that make sense at all? Abstinent. Here, come over here right now. Come here, Mark. I want you to stand just like this right next to her right now, Mark. And I want you to pray for Mark right now. Go ahead and search that thing out and see if you need to pray specifically for, okay, what you're receiving for his brother. But also, I want you to just open it up, and I want you to pray for Mark and pray for his family and see what else the Lord says, see what else the Lord separated him for in this moment. There's one more lady, I believe, that has a word right now, right there. Boom. Come here, sweetie. Come here right now. Come stand over here, right here. Somebody pray in tongues for me. Come on. Machine gun tongues. Whoa, I can feel the prophetic anointing. Come on, stir it up, guys. Stir it up. What is your word right now? There's a man named Dave, and he has a left knee problem. 
Dave. Is there a Dave in the room or a David? Or is there someone's husband named Dave? Anybody at all? Is there anybody that the Dave makes sense? Mm. Your dad's name's Dave right here. Now, what was it? Left knee? Does he have a knee issue that you know of? Say that. He has a left knee problem. Did you see that? She just got a name and she got his condition. And it's the left knee? Yes. And he's in Pakistan? With Todd Bentley. Oh, my Lord. Did you guys see that? Now, what just happened? The same glory that I'm moving in right now, it just came on you guys. I'm telling you right now. Lift your hands right now. Now, what you're going to do right now, you're going to receive more details right now, and I want you to pray in tongues right now. And you're going to pray right where you're at right now for a fresh release. Whatever it is that God's giving you insight into, giving you details into right now, I want you to pray over that as you receive it right now. If it's a name, if you get Joshua, begin praying for Joshua right now. Lord, we thank you right now. Come on, release prayers right now. Release prayers right now. This is prophetic intercessory mode right now. Release those prayers right now. Stir it up. Stir it up right now. Lord, we thank you for the families represented in this place. We thank you for the families represented in this place. We thank you for revival, Lord God, personal revival in families in Charlotte and in the southeastern states, Lord God. We thank you for a mighty release, Lord God, a mighty wave, Lord God, of revival that's imminent, that's upon America, Lord God. We pray release it, Lord. Release it, Lord God. Release it, Lord. Release it in fullness, Lord God. Riba sakar riba tur riba him bra kurie bara baya sakar abaya. Riba sakar riba tur riba yesiki alabaya. Come on, guys, another minute. Give me another minute. Give me another minute. Come on, pray. Release it right now. I believe you're activating angels right now. This is a part of my message tonight. My message is activate the angels. Come on, activate them. Activate them with your faith. Activate them with your prayers. Release the anointing right now. Give them assignments. Angels need assignments. They need to cooperate with us. We're in authority here on the earth. God has placed us in authority. They will not move many times unless we release it. Come on, release those arrows. Release those arrows. Strike with those arrows. Let victory come, Lord God. I release proclamations right now. This nation will not go down. This nation will prosper spiritually, spiritually, spiritually. Lord, release a mighty move. Release a mighty move. Let every demonic attack, let every demonic stronghold be broken in the name of Jesus. Ho, oh, right now, Lord God. Let every bit of spiritual blindness be lifted, Lord. Be lifted right now. We're asking for a greater release of that glory. A greater release of the glory in the church, Lord. A greater release of that cloud in the church, Lord. Raise up that mighty army. Raise up that mighty army, Lord. Raise up that mighty army, that Joel's army, Lord, that you prophesied about. Let it go from buildings like this to the stadiums. Let it go from stadiums to fields. Let what's happening in Pakistan in the fields happen in America, Lord. Release another awakening, Lord. There was a time in this country, God, where you released a mighty move. You released angels, and they filled the fields, Lord God. Fill the fields again in America in the name of Jesus. Release that million soul mantle in America. They're touching it in the third world, Lord. They've been touching it in Africa. They're touching it in places like Pakistan. Give it to us, Lord. Grant us that million soul mantle. Let it be cast on our nation. Let it be cast on revivalists, Lord God. Release it, Lord. Release it, Lord. Release it. Ho. Oh, in Jesus' name. 
In case you're wondering, I went into my own personal prophetic burden right there. Many of you, God gave you things to pray about, and you prayed about those things, and I believe angels are being released. I believe the anointing's being released. I see um, right now, actually, angels going into hospitals. Uh, Is there anybody in the meeting that just prayed for someone in a hospital somewhere? Anybody at all? Lift your hand. Raise your hand to me. Wave it. Anybody else? Did anybody else pray for someone in a hospital? Come here, sweetie. I want to agree with that right now. You prayed for someone in a hospital? Oh, you want to pray for someone right now. What's her name? Nancy Obisco. Nancy. Oh, she has cancer. You hear that? In the name of Jesus, I see an angel right now walking into the hospital, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I ask, Lord God, release that mighty anointing that I felt today, Lord God, over the cancer in the name of Jesus. Take it out in Jesus' name. Bam, in Jesus' name. Right out of her body, Lord. Right where she's at, Lord God. Ho, in Jesus' name. Same Holy Spirit that's here is there. Come on, will you guys give me another minute? Come on, close your eyes. Dig in right now. Go another level right now. Come on. Reba sikari brabata tandi rebraka. Reba sakuriamba tu rebe every bakaya dadabaya. Lord, I pray, let a regional release go out tonight, Lord. Let a regional release go out tonight, Lord God. I'm asking for those testimonies that we've heard in Todd's meetings, in Todd's overseas missions, Lord God, that when the crusade was happening, when the meeting was happening, there were reports of healing taking place simultaneously in area hospitals. I pray release angels right now into the hospitals in this area. Release angels into the, the urgent care centers. Release angels, Lord God, into schools and into therapist's office, Lord God, into the therapy centers, both mentally and physically, Lord God, in every way that therapy is done. I pray release angels, Lord God. Let angels go before us, Lord God. Let angels go before the school that's here right now. The school's going to be going forth over the next few months. We're going to be laboring in the harvest of Charlotte. Lord, give us a fresh harvest out of Charlotte, Lord. Give us a fresh harvest out of the East Coast, Lord. Brand new babies being born in the kingdom, Lord God. People that have never known Jesus. People that have never been in the Bible Belt. People that have never even darkened the door of of a church in their life. Bring those ones, Lord God, into the kingdom right now. Release angels before us, Lord God. Ho, in Jesus' name right now. Ho, hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a mighty shout. Wow. Wow. Now what happened over here? What happened over here? Did you guys get some more revelation? Did you guys work some more stuff out? What was that? What was going on there? Well, he had some issues in his back and in his joints where actually his, uh, his license was pulled, his CDL. Did you, you got the word about the back, right? Isn't that what you got? It was sciatic, right? And that was someone else? What was your word specifically? Oh, it was in that, that part of the body. Okay. Oh, yeah. Actually, what, what, we came, what came out is um, his brother, Joe, he drinks. He's a, I guess he's an alcoholic. He drinks a lot. He's an alcoholic. Joe, the name Joe, that's your brother? So I'm really feeling it's something. He said if uh, it's possibly something that, that um, if, if Joe knew, he, wouldn't, he may not even reveal it to him. But I'm really feeling that, it, yeah, it's something in his organs that the alcohol is doing. It's just Yeah, so you were feeling the, the effect of, of alcohol in that part of your body. Wow, isn't that awesome, guys? Give the Lord a mighty shout for that. Lord, we pray release healing in the family, Lord God. We agree with that word right now. Complete healing, personal revival in the Todd family. Ah, in Jesus' name. Bam, in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. Wow. Come on, stretch your hands, guys, right now. Stretch your hands right now. Holy. <laughs> oh. Holy. Come on, Janice. <laughs> oh. Holy. Holy. Oh. <laughs> Holy Spirit. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's the best prayer, amen. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. We agree with that, Lord God. We partner right now, Lord God, with what you're doing in here, great Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you're doing in the atmosphere. Oh, we thank you for what we're doing in the atmosphere. Is there any other Anns or Annies um, that, that are related in the room? Any other Anns or Annies? Uh, 
right shoulder. I'm getting the right shoulder right now, too. Oh, right now. You got a right shoulder issue? Lord, release it. Release it. Your right shoulder? Your son. And was your name Ann? Your name's Ann, and then your shoulders got your, your son's got that right shoulder. See, I keep getting that. I keep getting words about you. The thyroid, but I have I had the surgery on my shoulder, but it hangs up when I praise. It, it has a hook in it, if you will. Lord, release that hook right now. Oh. <laughs> release that hook right now in Jesus' name, right now. Mm. In the thyroid, Lord, we agree right now for complete healing. Yes, Bam! Yes, in agree. Jesus' name. <laughs> wow, thank you, Lord. Wasn't that awesome? Come on, give the Lord a mighty shout. Oh, praise you, Jesus. You can be seated. Wow, I just feel like this uh, this tiger thing like on me, like I have to attack the word of knowledge and not just let it come. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for healing, Lord God. There's someone, um, I believe, is being touched right now still of the right shoulder. So if, if that's you, just receive that right now. I can feel. Um, have one of you had surgery on it already? You've had surgery? I can feel where they cut it. I can feel where they had surgery on it. R bring complete restoration, Lord God, in that shoulder, we pray in Jesus' name. Wow. You guys ready to take up an offering? We're going to take up an offering tonight. So go ahead and start preparing your seed tonight. I want to tell you a few testimonies. I'm going to tell you one of the first vision, you guys, I ever had when I first met Todd Mintley related to the harvest. I'm going to tell you two, actually. It's related to what Todd's doing right now. Amen? And I just think it's amazing. Um, how many of you guys know that uh, divine coincidences aren't really coincidences, right? They're divine setups. They're called kairos in the Greek. It means due season. Wonderful Greek word, kairos, due season. It can almost be used interchangeably with a woman giving birth. Do you know that? Picture a woman giving birth. She cannot stop the time, right? It comes, the season comes to a close, and the child breaks forth. The child comes forth, right? That's what kairos is. Kairos is when there's a kairos season in God, the season has to change. It has, no, it has no choice. It has to change, right? And it's like God's glory has been released into the earth, okay? And the glory is, is being revealed more and more, right? But God has chosen in his wisdom to work in times, in kairos, and in seasons. Why? For our own good, it's for our own good. He chooses to give us doses, little doses here, little doses there, and he keeps giving the movement after movement, revival after revival. And the reason why he keeps sending wave after wave instead of just doing it all in one big wave is because it's his will that each man, woman, and child would turn to him. Amen? It's his will that we'd be given as many opportunities as we can possibly have to turn to the Lord, amen, and to get flowing with him, Right? If he would have just come with one move and divided the wheat from the tares, there would have been a lot lost in the harvest. You ever read that parable? Right? But the Bible says that in, in Matthew 13, that parable, that he'd wait till the time of the end. Then what, what did he say? He would send the angels, right? The angels that gather. I do not believe, you guys, it is a, a coincidence. Yeah, just use that word, coincidence. Um, that the angels, that there's a fresh release of the angelic right now. There's a fresh wave. I really do believe when we just prayed just now that there were angels that were released. And I believe I actually saw in a vision angels walking into some local hospitals. And I believe that some of, even some of our teams, some people are going to walk into some hospitals, you guys, and the angels have already gone before them. They've already helped prepare the way. They've already helped set the atmosphere. Kick the devil out of the room. Now the Holy Spirit can move freely, <laughs> right? Kick the discouragement out of the room. Kick the fear out of the room, right? The fear of death, whatever it may be. It's like they just set the conditions. They help bring that atmosphere. They help set those conditions, okay, to where heaven can come to her earth in a moment. Amen? 
And uh, that's what we need, you guys. If we're gonna have, if we're gonna have the results that Jesus had, okay, we need nothing less than heaven, right? We need nothing less than the kingdom. You want to know the secret of Jesus's ministry? This was his secret. He could actually get up and declare to the people, "The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right here." Nathaniel, from this day forward, henceforth, now and forever, you're going to see the angels of God. You're going to see heaven opened in the angels, right? He said angels, right? So I can talk about angels because Jesus did, (laughs) right? I'm biblical, John chapter 1. He said, from now on, Nathaniel, you're going to see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending. What does that mean? That means that the function of heaven is not being inhibited. There's free flow, right? Remember in the book of Daniel when that function of heaven got disrupted? What did the prophet have to do? The prophet had to be faithful. He had to keep praying. He had to do um, that uh, sort of uh, Christian uh, cuss word in, in some circles today, fasting. Ooh. Some places you go, you even start to say fasting. It's like they just cringe, but it's in the Bible, so, you know, Jesus fasted, excuse me, Paul fasted, Peter fasted, James fasted, the early church fasted, right? It did make it through the cross, you know, just in case you're wondering. It did. And a lot of times where people will reject things like that is where they've had a bad experience, right? Right? But don't let your bad experience allow you to throw out kingdom culture. Amen? Just like tithing. Tithing is an Old Testament culture. It's kingdom culture. We've all heard it before, if you've heard much teaching on tithing. It preceded the law. It was instituted during the time of Abraham. It was even around in Job's time. Job gave to the Lord. He gave to the poor. He that lends to the poor, he that gives to the poor, lends to the Lord. Right? So he, Job gave generously unto the poor, and he was giving unto the Lord. Right? What is tithing? It's a tribute to our king. Melchizedek came as the king of the most high God, the king of peace. Right? And the, and the, and the prince, or the, uh, the, the priest and the king. Right? He was priest of the mo- most high God and king of Salem, king of peace. That's the titles I was looking for. Right? Which of those titles only belong to Jesus? Amen? And uh, there's big debate on who Melchizedek was. Some people say it was Shem, Noah's son, and all this stuff. But I believe, no matter what you want to say about his name, that it was a representation of God on earth, right? And he comes as king, you guys. We're not part of a democracy. We don't pay God taxes. We're a part of the kingdom, We give him tribute, you know. We give him of our substance out of love, and it's a part of kingdom culture. It's a part of who we are, right? It's a part of interacting and being a part of that culture, amen? And really, you know, if you really want to get down to it, our whole lives belong to him, right? We're hidden in him. All that we have is his. But there's something, this amazing thing, you guys, about giving that he just, he set up. It's in the Bible. He set it up from the beginning, And it was just a culture that people walking the earth, okay, with natural money have adopted, and they received it from heaven, right? It's just part of who we are. Giving to Jesus, giving to the work of God, giving to the kingdom is part of who we are. Somebody say amen. Amen. It's natural to give. I love to give. But while you're preparing your seed there, okay, I want to tell you a few stories. Is that all right? A few supernatural stories. Um, For those of you that heard pieces of my testimony, I can never remember, like, which pieces I threw out at different times, you know. So forgive me if I'm repeating to some of you, like, the same things over and over and over again, you know. Um, Paul said it's good to repeat things, you know, that we may learn it better, right. Um, But uh, one of the first um, encounters I had with the Lord after I officially in person met Todd Bentley in 2012 
I came in contact with the ministry years before in the year 2004 um, when I had a visitation from the Lord and the Lord told me to go, um, you know, connect with his ministry on the internet. And then the Lord told me to do what he did, to go and basically shut myself in my room for three months. But I did it actually for five months. Um, and I had a visitation of the Lord, and it was great. <clears throat> um, but years later, I actually finally met Todd. And my whole testimony is I felt like I was uh, years of confusion, <laughs> years of um, not wondering, wondering why, asking all those type of questions, why, how, what, you know. I mean, I had supernatural encounters, you guys, up in the woods of Alaska for years. But I seriously would doubt them many times because there seemed to be no external manifestation of the word. Remember Abraham? God came to him and said, you are the father of many nations, right? <laughs> he said, you're going to, you know, your, your, your seed is going to touch the world, you know. It took, what, 25 years? He just kept going on, kept believing. Year after year, he kept believing but, you know, the more time goes by, the more you're tested, all right? It's that thing that James talks about, patience, right? The more you're tested, and the, the word will be tested. The Bible says that. The word will be tried. The word of God is tried seven times in the furnace of the earth. How many of you guys know the earth is a furnace? <laughs> We're in a gauntlet, man. We're in a war. <laughs> I'm telling you. Gird up, Right? telling you we are we're in a war amen paul wouldn't have t tell, told us you know to gird up with all the armor if we didn't need it right so i believe in, in that we're in the promised land and i believe we're in rest you know but i also believe we're in a war too but anyways one of those first encounters you guys after i i met todd i was literally scrubbing the toilets in the back of the the sanctuary or in the in the in the in the, in the church at that time i was the church janitor <laughs> And, uh, you know, Todd, uh, I think actually, if I remember correctly, even one of the prophetic words that he gave me, because he knew that my name was Stephen by that time. You remember Stephen in the Bible, like, waited on tables and stuff. And, and one of the, even the prophetic words that uh, Todd gave me is like, you've been serving, like, even here in the church, you know, you know, getting your hands dirty, you know, that sort of thing. I'm like, if only you knew, <laughs> all right? And he called me out, you guys, and, and um, you know, he invited me to come on the road with him, and, it, and it's been awesome. I've been a part of some incredible harvests around the world, Korea, Africa. You know, I got to be a part of Fresno just this last month, and, and um, I'm a part of Pakistan right now, too, just like you guys are. You guys are a part of Pakistan right now. And many of you, well, let me just say right now, before I go any further, I just want to thank all of you that have given over the last few weeks. We've had a lot of meetings, and there's some of you I know that have given thousands, right? Uh, it's harvest time, man. It's time to, to sow generously. I ran into one lady that came in here, and she said, Stephen, I've been giving so much lately, it has been hurting, right? Has any of you been there lately? I've been there at times, you know, where it's like, oh, each offering envelope gets harder and harder to slip into that bucket. But she said, you know, I was hashing it out with the Lord one day, and I said, Lord, this is a lady that came right to one of these meetings, you guys. This is a testimony right here in our community. So be encouraged by this. She said, I, I, I came um, to, uh, you know, and get, gave literally the last of my money away. She literally gave her food money away, you guys. And then um, that day, she found two priceless, like, heirlooms, okay, that had been lost for years. She found them worth a lot of money, these heirlooms, amen? And it was that day that she was hashing it out with the Lord and kind of like, you know, God, why? God, what? So I want to encourage you, okay, that when the trials come, when the things come that begin to test your faith that seem to be contradictory, stay the course, amen? Stay the course with what God originally said, with what God first said, and I'm telling you, he's going to bless you. I'm telling you, you're going to sow, or excuse me, you're going to reap as you have sown, abundantly. I believe that. Amen. But one of the first uh, encounters, I'm going to get to it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm stuck in the glory again. I'm all over the place. <clears throat> one of the first encounters, you guys, that I had with the Lord um, after Todd Bentley called me out, it was to, I think, just, just within the week. Um, I went before the elders of my church and um, I, I uh, you know, I had to appear like before the, the council of the elders and kind of get their blessing to travel with Todd, you know, in ministry. And, um, you know, to stay under their covering at that time. 
And I did that. But as I was waiting on the Lord that afternoon before I went to the meeting, I, um, I fell into a trance, you know, which has been my custom over the last few years. I fall into a lot of trances. And uh, <clears throat> I saw this man standing before me, and he had on, you know, a white, a white, uh, looked like a linen gown, you know. It didn't look like a robe. It looked more like a gown, you know. It was seamless. It had no seams, um, you know. It, it, it shined with, with a shimmer that told me it was not an earthly fabric, you know, there was no fabric I've ever seen that, that shined like that. Kind of reminded me of, of like Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Literally, they saw that his clothes was bright and shining. Whiter, um, in my translation, it says whiter than, than the, the, the whitest soap that they could wash clothes in. It was so clean. How many of you guys know that when you come into Christ, you get cleansed? Amen. How many of you guys know that when you come into Christ, your filthy rags are made as white, white as snow? Amen. Oh, there's purity. There's cleansing in that. And this angel stood before me, and he had a golden sash across his, his body. And he said, my name is the glory of the Lord. And I thought, well, that's funny. That seems kind of sacrilegious to me. I thought the glory was the glory, and you're an angel. <laughs> right? But really... Um, angels will, will take on the identity of kind of like their assignment in heaven, right? They'll actually even, you know, give up their names and fully commit themselves to the identity of their anointing, of their assignment, of their calling, right? This is a, a heavenly trait, right? Um, you become what you're called to, right? That's why nobody can ever take your calling away from you. Because your, your calling is a part of who you are, right? But anyways, um, this angel stood before me. He says, my name is the glory of the Lord. And he began to speak to me about some different things. But then I went into an open vision there. This vision opened up beside the angel, and I saw this revival meeting. I saw that I was involved in this revival meeting actually in Alaska. And the revival was, 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 was just bursting at the seams, man. Um, it, 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 had, it had outgrown the local church that it started in, and we went to the, uh, a local um, gymnasium, you know, where kids play basketball and everything. And I can remember seeing this gymnasium, you guys, and it was packed full, man. Almost like the fire marshal's there and, like, about ready to shut it down because it's so packed. I mean, literally, you guys, all of the aisles were filled with chairs, even to the very back, I saw, I was kind of walked around it, and I saw chairs, okay, the backs of the chairs that were to the backs of the building, literally. They were on the backs of the building all the way around, all the walls. There was not one open piece of wall space that did not have a chair up against it. It was so packed because <sighs> God was pouring out. But I looked in that crowd, I looked in that service, and there was a river flowing through that place. And to my shock and awe, it was a river of money. And at that time, I had some religious mindsets about money, right? I separated the money from the glory. I said, the, the glory is holy, right? The presence is holy, Money is that thing that gets, you know, is, is, is the root of evil, right? But really that's a mis, you know, interpretation because it says the love of money, right, is the root of evil, right? But I had even kind of a, still a false sort of mindset, still even kind of tugging at me. And, um, you know, that was the last thing I expected to see, you guys. I mean, really. I'm in an encounter with an angel, and I'm seeing money flow through the middle of the, of the place. I'm like, God, where's the miracles, you know? Where's the glory? Where's all this? And the Lord began to speak to me and says that the harvest must be financed. The harvest at the end of the age will not happen unless it is properly financed. You know who the biggest uh, people, the biggest funders of the harvest are today in the church? You know who they are? They're people that are in the prosperity movement. Do you know that? A lot of people don't know this story. Some people do. Um, but do you know who financed Reinhard Bonnke's ministry for many years? Gave a million dollars a month to Reinhard Bonnke's ministry? Kenneth Copeland. 
And there's people in the church today that will demonize Kenneth Copeland and will put Reinhard Bonnke on a pedestal. Because Reinhard Bonnke, okay, is up in front of the people, leading the people to the Lord. But Kenneth Hagen, or excuse me, Kenneth Copeland, gathering in funds a lot, <laughs> right? I'm telling you, man, that guy puts his money where his, where his mouth is, and he puts his money where his heart is, and he uses the wealth that God has poured out to fun, finance the harvest. And that's only one guy, one ministry, you guys, a million dollars a month to those crusades in Africa. That one ministry, one ministry is, is responsible, okay, is directly behind millions, tens of millions of souls coming into the kingdom in Africa. Who's the guys, most of the guys that you see on, on television, on Christian TV today? Who are those guys? A lot of them are the prosperity preachers. Why is that? It's because they have the money. Why do they have the money? Because they have a right mindset about money. They believe for money. They require money, actually. They, can, they, they have a revelation that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and he has given it into the sons of men, the hands of the sons of men. Anything that the devil has out there that you can point to and says that's evil and it involves finances, that is illegal, what the devil is involved in in the world right now in finances. We have not just the right, not just the privilege, not just, we, we, we have the responsibility, you guys, the commission to call forth those funds, to call forth, you, you, you want to know the, the, one of the, the number one, if not the number one industry right now um, that's internet driven is the porn industry. Right? You want to know the number one search term that's put into search terms on porn sites? You know, want to, want to know what it is? Some of you are like, good Lord, what are you getting into? The number one word that's typed into search engines on porn sites is love. Yes, the counterfeit. The enemy is drawing millions of people away, you know, from true love, from experiencing true love the heart of the Father, through that. But we as the church, you guys, all of that money that's being funneled through that industry, it belongs to the kingdom. It doesn't belong to them. They have no right. The devil has no right because the earth is the Lord's. The fullness, all of the resources, all of the wealth, all of the accumulated effect of finance, global economy, it belongs to God right now. But God has to have a people that have a proper mindset about finances that will rise up and will take it back, right? And it begins with our, our hearts, you guys. Where your, where your heart is, your treasure will be also, Jesus says, right? It begins with our hearts, and it begins with also, you know, our mindsets. We have to have this proper mindset. We have to see, you guys, that the, fi the harvest is not going to happen, okay, without our generosity, okay? And this, the reason why I'm also saying this, I'm not just saying this for the, the harvest right now, okay, and for this offering we're taking up right now. I believe many of you in this building, okay, many uh, Christians in the body of Christ have to move out and begin investing more, okay? Begin spreading out. Begin diversifying what they're doing. Begin starting things, startups, you know, begin building. Seriously. There's so many people that for so many years they haven't built anything, because they have that, that thing in their heart that won't allow them to move into kingdom building, right? Because there's this thing that's been going around in the body of Christ all these years. I'm not into building my own kingdom. I'm into building the kingdom of God. You ever heard that? I don't like that statement. Because really, if you belong to Jesus, the kingdom that you do build is God's kingdom, right? God wants you to be in the kingdom building. He does. He wants you to build the biggest empire you could possibly build. I'm telling you. Along with all the, the ministers too, just so you know. He wants all the ministers to have the biggest ministries they could possibly have. I'm telling you. Because the ministries belong to Jesus. They belong to the kingdom, right? If they are you know have the right heart about it, right? And then the bigger those individual kingdoms are, the, the more the, the kingdom of God is manifestly filling the earth, you guys, more impact we can have, right? So you guys, I'm going to ask you to give right now. I'm going to ask you to give in the harvest right now, okay? 
I'm going to ask you to, to be a part of the move of God. Amen. Once again. And I know many of you have, have, have given sacrificially already, and I, I want to thank you once again for that. Bless you. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's just between you and God. What would the Lord have you give tonight? If you didn't come ready to give by check or cash, there is an envelope um, in, the, in, the, in front of your chair. There should be. Um, you do have the ability to give by debit card or credit card. But, you know, we ask that you just be good stewards of your finance. Don't get into debt, you know, of this, you know. But some people like to use that avenue. And I also want to pass out, where's those, where's those partner brochures? Can I get those partner brochures? There's some of them right there. I would like there to be a partner brochure in everybody's hand tonight, okay? Look at that, man. It's got Todd on the front, man. In the name of Jesus, casting out devils like over the masses, you know. And uh, it's got all these masses. I want, go ahead and pass those around. I want a partner brochure in everybody's hand, if we could facilitate that. Yeah. Yeah, and even if you are already a partner, you can give it to someone else. <laughs> Holy. And um, I want you to pray, if you're not already, about being a partner, okay? About being a partner with the ministry. Um, we have to have uh, partners, you know, for things that we do in missions because, you know, whenever we go overseas, you guys, and we put on crusades, we're not depending on the offerings that come in, if there's any offerings at all, to pay for that crusade. You guys know what I'm saying? Did you guys hear me on that? We want to go into third world countries, and we want to go into places like Pakistan and India, and we, and we want to bless them, right? We want to bless the churches that are there, right? We want to bless the, the people that are there. So a lot of that, you guys, a lot of that, that, that ministry, it happens through the, the ministry of partners. You know, people that feel called to the Lord to give monthly or, or give yearly. You know, however you feel led, um, you know, to, to do that. Amen? So we just want to ask you to pray about that. That's something actually that I initiated. Todd didn't ask me to do that. Shani didn't ask me to do that. I felt led to do that. Okay, so pray about that um, if you're not already a partner, you know, that's giving. Oh, praise God. You guys ready to take up the offering? Go ahead and uh, bring the ushers forward here. <clears throat> Praise God. Lord, we want uh, the, the, the harvest, Lord God, to be brought in in Jesus' name. Mm. Hallelujah. Don't start taking it yet. I didn't want it to be taken yet. I, that's all right. I just said come. I said ushers come. You can go ahead and keep those in there right now, but just come up here with me, please. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come up here. I always have to pray over it first. Ho, oh, shakalabaya. Let's go ahead and put it in there. I know I'm difficult, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ho, oh, Lord, multiply it. Oh. <laughs> shakalabaya. Multiply it back on these. Go ahead and close your eyes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray over it. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for the privilege tonight of being part of the harvest, Lord. I thank you for the privilege tonight, Lord God, being part of the move of God. <sighs> and Lord, we just pray that as these finances go forth, Lord God, as this money goes forth, Lord God, that many souls would come into the kingdom, Jesus, that many miracles would be done in the name of Jesus and that would attest to Jesus' love, that would attest to the Father's love. I pray, Lord God, right now, that as those Pakistanis, Lord God, are seeing the miracles, Lord God, they're seeing the blind eyes open, Lord God, they're seeing the deaf ears open, they're seeing those people, Lord God, that were born crippled, that were born deaf and dumb, they're seeing them healed. I pray, Holy Spirit, great Holy Spirit, pour out in their hearts the reality of God's love, that every miracle is a testimony. It's a picture, Lord God, of God's love. I pray just penetrate their hearts right now with that reality, Lord God. We thank you for that wonderful harvest that came in today, Lord God. 20,000 people came into the kingdom today, Lord God, because of generous partners like that are here today, Lord God, and generous partners all over the world that sow into this ministry. Lord, I'm asking for a hundred more partners. I'm asking for a thousand more partners, Lord God, that you would bring them in, Lord God. And I'm asking, Lord God, for an increase in the harvest, Lord. An increase, Lord God, in what you're pouring out around the world, Lord God. We partner right now with heaven right now, and we pray that tomorrow's crusade, Lord 
Lord God. Tomorrow's uh, meeting, Lord God, that the harvest would increase, Lord God. Where there was 20,000 today, let there be tens of thousands more, Lord God, coming into the kingdom tomorrow, Lord God. And we're asking, Lord God, for more than a million souls, Lord God, to come into the kingdom, Lord God. We're asking for that million soul mantle to be released, Lord God. We partner with that right now. We partner with that. And Lord Jesus, as you said in Luke 10, you said to us, Lord God, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he'd send forth laborers. Oh, we pray, Lord God, that the laborers be sent forth, Lord God. We partner with that in our finances as well, Lord God. We pray in Jesus' name, let the laborers be sent forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen? Yeah, go ahead and uh, uh, begin to pass that out. If you are watching on uh, by live stream tonight and, and you feel led of the Lord tonight to give in, into what we've just talked about, there is a button there on your screen that you can press and um, to donate. Amen. So bless you. Hallelujah. So what time we got? Oh, look at that. It's already nine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Time goes by fast, huh? When you're having fun. Also, I wanted to quickly, before I get into a little more of what I'm going to talk about tonight, I won't keep you too much longer. Mm. I want to, uh, I wanted to just min- briefly mention some products um, back there. If you haven't checked out the bookstore, you're going to want to do that. Um, I always have people coming up and asking me, uh, what is the number one product? Seriously, I've had this asked multiple times since I've been here. What is the number one resource? I like to call it a resource. What is the number one resource that can help me to see in the spirit more? Has anybody ever asked that before? Like, how can I see in the spirit more? I just feel like I'm seeing now, but I want to see more. Well, Todd has a series. It's called Developing Your Seer Gift. This is an incredible CD series. Um, he actually, uh, you know, I, I, I believe the one, he actually talks about the word of knowledge on here, two discs on it. I believe he talks about it in England. And, man, the word of knowledge, when this CD was, was made, I remember when it was made, actually, back in the day. And uh, when, when this CD was made, the word of knowledge was just really breaking out. Um, in, incredible amount of glory on that. But, you know, some of the titles on here is Spiritual Gates, Doors, and Portals. He actually talks about when, when he went in, when Todd went in with a team into Egypt and Israel and actually how they actually believe that they came, like, in contact with portals that were, like, in the Bible, you know, like Jacob's well. They're there at Jacob's well. This is the place, you know, where Jacob, you know, had the encounter and heaven was open. This is the gate of heaven, Bethel. Remember that? And Todd talks about how there can literally be geographical locations where doors standing open in heaven remain, even for centuries. You guys are in the Morningstar community. You've heard about Moravian Falls, right? Anybody? So Todd talks about some of that stuff in here. Um, He talks about activating your spiritual senses and developing your seer gift. So this is uh, a great resource, you know, that if you want to learn more about that, you can get into. We have a few of our resources back there, too. Um, I'm missing my workbook. There it is. Bam. Can you grab that for me? Oh, praise God. This is our newest school from our ministry. Isn't that cool? How many of you guys like that? It says, enter the flame, a school on encountering God. This school right here, man, is some of my juiciest stuff on 10 years, you know, waiting on the Lord, you know, and uh, how to enter deeper into the flame, how to enter deeper into the type of Christianity, you know, that we all want. What is that? A Christianity filled with experience, amen? Amen filled with encountering God. So that's our newest uh, school um, that's set back there in the back on one of the tables there. It comes with this uh, six-part DVD set, or actually seven-part. It's five lessons, but seven-part DVD set. So you got the DVD with the 82-page workbook. Um, I'm actually going to be teaching that in the school sometime, I believe. So praise God. You guys bring your Bibles tonight? Anybody bring your Bible? Ho. Oh, go ahead and grab your Bibles. And the uh, first place uh, we're going to turn to tonight is Daniel, the 10th chapter. Praise God. I'm going to pray. Hello. Is it Freddie? Bless you, Freddie. See, I'm starting to learn some of the names. I'm getting it. 
Oh, God is good. God is good. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the word tonight. Oh, we thank you for um, the miracles, Lord God. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the touch of the spirit that's already been present in the meeting, Lord God. We're asking for increase, Lord God. We're contending for increase, Lord God, and we thank you for that, Lord, in advance. We call those things that are not as though they are in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for revival, Lord. We thank you for a mighty move of your spirit, Lord God. We thank you for the angels being released, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for a wonderful partnership taking place between heaven and earth, Lord God. We thank you for a greater release, Lord God, a greater manifest release of heaven on earth, Lord. Jesus, that's what you taught your disciples to pray, Lord God, and we just take on that model even now in our prayer, Lord, and we just pray, let your kingdom come, Lord. Let your will be done. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, holy be your name. You are holy. You are holy over this place, Lord God. In the midst, Lord God, like Isaiah said, in the midst of a people of unclean lips, in the midst of a people that do not know, that do not know God, do not know the holiness of God, we exalt you. Right now, holy is the Father. Holy is the Father. Holy, 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 holy. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. And we pray, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Lord, we recognize that your will cannot happen unless the kingdom comes. Manifestly, the kingdom is not in word only, but power, Lord. Your will cannot be done apart apart from a demonstration of your power. So let the will of God be done. Let the will of God be orchestrated in the earth, in this place, Lord, in America, through a demonstration of power. We pray, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on the earth just as it is in heaven. Oh, I thank you that earth's destiny is heaven's reality. I thank you that the earth's destiny is heaven's reality. And you're drawing the earth up into yourself, Lord. You're drawing the earth and heaven together, Lord God, in your Kairos time. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Bam. That's Ephesians 2. God is gathering together in himself, in one, heaven and earth. (laughs) That's been my meditation lately. Um, But the title of my message tonight, you guys, is let's give the angels something to work with. Okay, it's a very strong message that I have in my heart right now and that I have in my spirit um, because there's been just such a release lately of the angelic in my own life personally, in our ministry, and people connected with the ministry and people connected with the fresh fire. And we've literally been seeing uh, just an incredible release of the angels working, you guys, of the angels being released, the angels going on assignment. Okay, and uh. Actually, keep, keep your finger there in Daniel 10, the first scripture that I'm actually going to read. I'm going to read it to you. You can flip there if you want, or you can stay in Daniel 10. It's up to you. I, I'm just going to read it here real quickly. It's Hebrews chapter 1. This just came to me. I do want to say this scripture. So give me a second. You guys, many of you know this, but I'm going to read it right off the page. Okay? The last verse of chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, verse four, four, 14. Are they not? Question. Are they or are they not? That is the question. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth? Say sent. Come on, say it again. Sent. I feel uh, the anointing. (laughs) Are they not sent? Lord, we thank you that the angels are sent. They're sent forth. They need to be sent. Right? That's apostolic. That's what the word apostolos means. Apostoles means in the Greek it means sent. Sent. We thank you, Lord, that the church is an apostolic church, Lord God. They're sending, Lord God, forth, going forth. It says, are they not ministering spirits that are sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Now, how many of you guys know that you have inherited salvation? And you're still inheriting salvation. That's talking about us. Okay? The Bible does say on behalf of those that shall inherit salvation. 
and it is talking about us, and we are talking about angels here, right? You ever read that scripture? I believe it's in Hebrews, uh, Ephesians 4, where it says, to each has been given the earnest of the Spirit, right? What is earnest? Earnest is the Greek word for down payment. <laughs> so all the, all the guys that just want to focus on the full finished work, they have to deny those scriptures, Right? The fact of the matter is we do have fullness in Christ, but here in the earth, fullness is being clothed upon us. Fullness is coming. The kingdom is here. The king is here now. Jesus is here, but yet he's still coming. He's still coming. The kingdom's still coming. It's not one or the other. It's both. And you have to be able to grasp this mentality. You have to be able to grasp this concept that I'm sharing with you tonight. Otherwise, you'll just be in, you'll be in confusion. So you'll hear this sort of, um, I don't know, this diox taking place all the time in my preaching. I'll continually go back and forth all the time. Finished work, what's happening now? Fini- uh, kingdom now, kingdom coming, right? You've been healed, you're being healed, right? You've been delivered, you're being delivered, right? You've received fullness, you're still receiving fullness. It's done, it's accomplished, it's finished, you're in process, right? You've been glorified, you're still being glorified, right? I'll continually bounce back and forth, okay? Because both are true. Both are true. But the reality, the finished work reality, it is in Christ, right? And it's not fully manifest. I like to use the word manifest. The word manifest is it means to become apparent to the senses, right? And until I see, you know, the earth looking just like it does in heaven, right? <laughs> Functioning in the same way it looks in heaven, then we haven't experienced fullness yet, right? I like the way Todd says it. He says, until my shadow is healing the sick, <laughs> I have room to grow, right? And you see this in, in guys that focus too much on the finished work. They stop growing spiritually because in their minds, they don't need to grow anymore. That's a sad place to be. But how many guys know it's from glory to glory? Glory to glory, we experience out of the fullness in time waves of glory, waves of glory. We keep being clothed upon with the glory. The same thing in revival culture. I like the way Todd Bentley said it in a periscope last week. Someone began to talk on the periscope about revival culture, and Todd stopped him, and he said, I don't really like to use the word revival culture. He says, I like to use the word kingdom culture because revivals are, is a revival is a special move of God. It is a special release. It's a Kairos time, a Kairos season that comes, and God releases another release. But if you just believe you're in revival all the time, then you won't be expectant of the next revival that's coming, right? And in some cases, they miss the revival because they have a wrong mindset. They don't have a kingdom mindset. So he likes to use the word kingdom culture. We cultivate kingdom culture, but we understand another wave's coming. We're pressing in for that that other wave. And the Bible talks about that. The Bible talks about that in in Acts chapter 3, that there would be times of refreshing that would come upon his people, right? From the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing that come upon his people from the presence of the Lord, that's revivals. But the word is times. It means seasons of refreshing will come, right? So there's another New Testament scripture for you to give context that, yes, revivals do come in waves and they come in seasons. Amen? Amen. But I want you to see here, the main reason why I turned to the scripture in Hebrews, I want you to see, are they not ministering spirits that are sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Okay, now ultimately, it's God who sends the angels forth, but we still have something to do with it, right? You remember the story in in Revelations chapter 12? What is that famous scripture that a lot of people like to quote out of Revelations 12? That that they... uh, how does it go? By the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, right? They overcame. There it is. They overcame. What's happening? The devil, the dragon, and, and his you know, cohorts you know, are battling in the heavens. And Michael, right, and his angels did war with the dragon and his angels in the heavenlies. So you have a heavenly battle, right, ensuing, taking place. But you have on the earth overcoming by the blood of the lamb, right? So we do have to have a legal precedence for taking authority, amen? Jesus gave that to us through his blood, right? But also, what did it say? Through the word of their testimony, right? While the battle was ensuing in the heavenlies, while the angels, Michael and his, 
you know, angels, his angelic man, were overtaking the enemy, the believers on the earth had to be a part of that with their mouths, with the words of their testimony, with releasing the word out of their mouth, right? And what is that? That's a form of the angels being released, the angels being sent forth, right? And I believe the other scripture that, that, that gives clear biblical reference to this, in case you're wondering, um, I actually lost my sermon. <laughs> this is my sermon that I scratched, you know, chicken scratch right before the meeting. But how many of you guys know the word is in my heart, you know, so I can preach it. But this reference I didn't find, but it's somewhere in Psalms, I believe somewhere around 85. And it says, are not the angels who excel in strength, okay, do they not heed the voice of God's own word, Right? So it didn't say just God's word. It said God's voice, the voice of God's word. How many of you guys know that Jesus is in you and that you have his word in you and that you can align your thinking and your heart and your speech and become the voice of God in the earth? And when you do that, what's happening? There's an alignment taking place between heaven and earth. God's saying, Stephen, I'm releasing the angels. You catch the revelation of that. I catch the revelation of that, and I say, in the name of Jesus, let the angels be released. And then I come into agreement. I synchronize, so to speak, heaven and earth, and boom, there's a release. There has to be an agreement between heaven and earth. We have to flow with the Lord. We have to flow with what the Lord's doing. That's where we see the greatest miracles, you guys. That's what the word of knowledge is all about. The word of knowledge is identifying what is the Father doing? Where is the Father moving? Who is the, the Father pointing out right now? And when we move with that, when we flow with that, we see the release of the miraculous. We see heaven aligned with earth. Years ago, and Bill Johnson used that term in his book, When Heaven Invades Earth, when heaven and earth become synchronized. Synchronized. They sync up, right? They're compatible. But the, the thing I want you to see from the scripture is angels are sent forth to minister on our behalf. And we are a part, you guys, of sending forth those angels. We are a part of that. I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to show you through Scripture. The people that just sit back and say, if it's the will of God, well, it will just happen, those are usually the people that don't see anything. Those are usually the people that don't live supernatural lives, that are, that are um, you know, predisposed, okay, to live the rest of the way that the, the rest of the world lives, right? But how many guys know that we're plugged into the kingdom? We can live by faith, we can see miracles. We can see the supernatural, amen. We live by a different standard. We live by a different set of rules. We live by a different window of opportunity and possibility. When everything's tanking for everybody else, it's our opportunity, amen. We don't have to tank, right? We don't have to go down with the ship. We can rise above the ship, amen, because we're plugged into a different kingdom that has a higher reality, amen. But Daniel 10, we're just going to read through this, okay? And it's going to be some just some great reading here. I'm going to pull out some great uh, points here. And I'm going to try to not go on too many rabbit trails. So intercessors pray. <laughs> oh, praise you, Lord. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel. Ho, oh, shikalabayandabaya. Angels are often called messengers, right? They bring messages. Um, I believe the... The, the Greek word for angel is, 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 is interchangeable with the word messenger. You would actually see um, human messengers in the Bible, like a human messenger. Someone that would come and give a message, and in the same word is the same word for angel, right? Messenger. Angels are messengers. It was revealed, this message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was Bel Teshazar. That was his um, you know, Babylonian name that was given to him when he was stripped of his Jewish identity, when he first was hauled off to Babylon, right? The message was true, but the appointed time was long, right? So you can receive a message, but there's always an appointed time, right, with a message. So what we do, what we try to do is we try to be faithful. We pray that thing in. At times, God can allow us to violate the appointed time by faith, right? And you want a scripture for that? Mary came to Jesus and said, hey, multiply or, you know, take care of this thing. Turn the water into wine, right? What did Jesus say? He says, not the time, right? It's not the appointed time for me to reveal my glory. She said, you take care of this, right? And then what happened? The father switched it. All right, now it's time because she pulled on heaven. She pulled on the father with her faith, right? 
So faith is now. Oftentimes faith can bring things into the now that now is not even the appointed time or season, right? I believe that I've been able to touch something. I believe actually I'm personally touching something that's coming in a mighty wave. That's coming in a mighty wave. I believe actually that everything that I'm touching right now, I'm touching something by faith right now that's going to hit the global corporate body in a huge wave a little later on here, right? And I believe that us as a community, we can touch it right now as well. I believe anybody can touch it right now. Anybody can experience it right now with faith, amen? That's why I called it a personal revival the other day. And when it comes down to it, even in the massive waves that come, it still all comes down to personal revival. Each person has to sow into that thing and invest with their faith. There's huge moves of God that come, and there's still millions of people that don't participate in it, right? But what happens usually for the people that are already into revival, okay, a lot of times they have to see the big, massive wave, you know, to, to come into agreement with that. They say, oh, well, there's, there's, there's a church being packed out. There is revival, right? But if you're connected with the Lord, you can discern when things are coming before they're even here, and you can tap into them by faith. And that's what Mary did. She said, I can sense Jesus. You've been around for a long time. And it's like Mary could just sense. It's like it, it, it's, all, it's time. But, but it wasn't time, but it was like almost time, right? I mean, he was, he was coming out. He was coming out, right? Uh, he, he was coming in to his ministry. But maybe there was like a, a week left before the Father wanted to openly demonstrate his glory. Maybe there was a month left. Maybe there was a year left. Who knows? I don't know. All I know is that Mary got what she wanted in that moment. It was not delayed. She changed the time. She switched it up by her faith. Amen? Oh, glory. But it says here we're seeing some wonderful principles. An appointed time. It was long, but an appointed time. And he understood the message and, and had the understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth. So this is the famous 21-day uh, fast here that's talked about, the Daniel fast, right? Nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Seven times three, 21 days. Verse 4, now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the river, the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and I looked and behold a certain man clothed in fine linen whose waist was girded with gold, the gold of Uphaz. His body was like the barrel, which is like a precious stone, mm, shined with a brightness and a brilliance that was unearthly. Hallelujah. This was the appearance of his, of his body. And his face was like the appearance of a lightning. His eyes were like torches of fire. His arms and feet like burnished bronze in color. And the sound of his words like, was like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. Hmm. I believe this is going to be happening more now. I believe actually I received a word today that we're going to see more open manifestations of creation signs, what the Lord spoke to me. I had this wonderful prophetic experience today. I, I'm not going to go into all of it today, but that's one of the terms that came out of it. Get ready for creation signs, where literally the prophet will prophesy something and there will be a notable sign in creation openly that people will like, wow, I, I know you had a vision because you just had an earthquake, just like here, right? I can remember stories of, um, you know, the first, I believe it was the first time Paul Kane went out to meet John Wimber in Anaheim back in the day. And Paul Kane actually told him that my uh, arrival will be announced by an earthquake. And I believe the moment he stepped foot off the plane, they had an earthquake in Anaheim, right? That's a notable creation sign, sign in creation that's connected to that prophetic office. But up until this point, we've seen maybe one, maybe two, maybe three, a handful of guys like that that walk in that. I believe we're about to see a fresh wave of hundreds, thousands that walk in that. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm telling you, man, the whole earth is, I believe, about to be shaken, right, with the reality of heaven being seen in the face faces of men and women. 
being being heard and being demonstrated through the voices and, and through the lives of men and women, ordinary men and women, just like me and you. Elijah was a man with like passions like me and you. Oh, yet the king of Assyria feared Elijah because it was as if Elijah was in the room when they were discussing the battle plans, and he was. <laughs> right? Man, what if there was some prophets in this nation? <laughs> Right, that moved in, in, in those kind of notable, remarkable miracle signs and wonders. I mean, let me let me. Can you just dream with me a little bit? Can we just Holy Ghost fantasize right now? Is that all right? What if there was such a, a prophet? What if there was such a church? What if there was such a group of people in America, where literally those Supreme Court justices take their pen and begin to write a demonic doctrine in the law, and they pause. Fear comes into their heart. What's Elijah thinking right now? What what is the prophet seeing? Are we going to get away with this? Is there going to be some sort of a repercussion, you know, for our actions? Oh man, you guys, that's another one that the church has done nowadays. They've thrown out the fear of the Lord. Um, you know, the Bible declares in Isaiah eleven that 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 the fear of the Lord is one of the embodiments of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> He doesn't say he has fear. He says he is fear. Do you realize that? Do you realize that if the church rejects the fear of the Lord, they're rejecting a part of God? And let me tell you the importance of the fear of the Lord. You ready for this? This is going to be good. You're going to like this. I was at one of Lou Ingalls' meetings, 2011. I was at one of the calls in Alaska. He had a one-day call that he did in Alaska. And if you were in the school the other morning, I I talked about how many times when I feel the realm of the trance coming on me, I'll get sleepy. I'll feel sleepy. And I felt that realm come on me, Constance, at Lou Engel's meeting. You're going to like this one. This is is a fun one. And I went back to the chair, and I put my head, kind of like Roland Buck did all those years ago, I put my head on my hand, and the moment I did that, I fell into a trance. And I saw the Lord Jesus standing there. And, uh, he was kind of had like his hand on his hip like this, right? And he was backing up like, and he was getting ready to kick something. And I, what is this, going to be a football? What is this going to be a, a, a soccer ball? What is this? I looked at this thing, and it was a whiskey glass. It was a, a whiskey bottle upside down in a shot glass, and it had not been poured. And the Lord backed up, and he kicked that thing. Bam! And it broke open, and it was released. It was released. And the Lord looked at me, and he said, Stephen, this drink is strong drink. This is strong drink. This is a strong anointing. He says, this wine right here, or this liquor right here, this strong drink, this hard drink, this is the anointing of the fear of the Lord. And he says, he told me, Stephen, the reason why it's in a glass and it hasn't been poured, is because my church has rejected the fear of the Lord. The church has not, wanted, has not wanted to take a drink of this. They've wanted the joy, and they've wanted the miracles, and they've wanted the grace message, but they haven't wanted the whole counsel of God. They haven't wanted all that I had to give them, all that I had to, for them to walk in, all that I had to equip them with to make their cities and their nations into the habitation of God. That's what this is about, you guys. This isn't about just having another wonderful church service. This is about let Charlotte literally become the habitation of God Almighty himself. Let America become the very habitation of God himself that the devil can't even get in. The glory is so thick, the, the, the place is so on fire with the glory, the devil can't even get in. Cancer can't even get in. The homosexual agenda and spirit, it can't even get in. It can't even penetrate the minds of our young people in this place. Those deceptions, they just burn up on contact with the glory. That's what it's about, you guys. But Jesus told me, he says, the reason why it's upside down in the glass and it hasn't been poured is because the church has rejected this anointing. And he said, let me tell you right now, Stephen, the fear of the Lord is America's only shot to end abortion. Shot glass. And then I went into another vision. 
and I saw a woman up on the bed, up on, in, in, in an abortion clinic. And I believe actually what's happening right now with all the videos and everything coming out is a direct, indirect, okay, alignment with the prayers of the saints, man. With guys like Lou Engel, man, that have been pressing in, have been fasting, had been praying for decades. God, end abortions and revival. Oh. But I saw this vision of this woman. She's in an abortion clinic, and she had her legs up, and she's about to give birth to a baby. And the doctor is over on the other side of the room, and he's preparing his instruments to go and cut up the baby as it's coming out of the womb. Partial birth abortion. One of the most horrible things ever. And then all of a sudden, I saw an angel standing right at the front of her legs between her and the doctor. And the Lord spoke to me. The audible voice of God spoke in that moment and said, Stephen, when the fear of the Lord is in its proper place in the church, then the flow of death will end. And then I saw that doctor turn around and walk over. And he walked over and he's going to kill that baby. And he bounced off the angel. And he could not, physically could not kill that baby. Right? And then the Lord showed me in Exodus, I believe it's chapter 1. It says, the midwives feared God more than they feared the word of Pharaoh to the saving of the male children. Specifically mentions the fear of the Lord that came on those women that directly contributed to the saving of life. And then I read in Proverbs where it says, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Her children find refuge under her. It says it right in Proverbs, you guys. Children find a place of safety and protection in the fear of the Lord. It's right in the Bible. <sighs> So what do I believe? I believe this next move of God that we're coming into is going to have the fear of the Lord in it. And I believe the church is going to receive the fear of the Lord. And it's not going to be, you know, some law-based religious jargon, right? How many of you guys know you can have the fear of the Lord and have the joy of the Lord too, right? It's not like, you know, the, the, the spirit of joy and the spirit of the fear of the Lord are like fighting each other inside of you, you know, like fighting each other. They're in perfect harmony, right? There's a time for the fear to come. And then there's a time for the joy to come, right? Right? Now, what is the spirit that's paired with the fear of the Lord in the seven spirits of God? Do you guys remember this? Which one is it? The knowledge, right? When the fear of the Lord is at work in the church, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the Holy One, the knowledge of what God says is right and wrong. The, God, the knowledge of what is truly righteous, what is right, and what is not right, what is a violation of the law of God, will be released in the land. There will be open revelation. There will be open vision. There will be open revelation, right? But when the fear of the Lord's not at work, there's more confusion. There's more confusion openly released in the land. And people call that which is evil good and that which is good evil, right? Is that good? Was that good? That was one of the most powerful encounters I've ever had. And um, it's, I had that encounter because I'm an intercessor, right? I've been interceding, man, for America. been interceding, man, for the babies, you know? Oh, I don't know how I got into all that. <laughs> but once again, it does tie in with my message. There's angels involved in that ministry. Angels of the fear of the Lord, man, that work in that ministry. Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord. Um, verse 7, I, Daniel, alone saw the vision for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror, right? A, a great terror fell on them, not just because they're in the Old Testament, right? A great terror fell on them because the fear of the Lord was here, right? Fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves, Here's another principle. When you don't know Jesus, the fear of the Lord comes and you run the other way. But when you do know Jesus, it draws you deeper into him, right? Because it's paired with that spirit of knowledge. It actually creates a hunger in you to know him more. And it actually releases an anointing for you to know him more, right? 
just through that reverence, you know, and through that holy awe of who he is, you know, he draws you deeper into himself. Verse 8 says, Therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me, right? So, I mean, people, people want to know, you know, like, you know, where, where is it scriptural, you know, precedence, you know, for people to fall or, you know, people to go out in the spirit or people to get drunk and kind of lose control, feel like there's no strength in their body. That's what I felt like last night, like there's no strength in my body. Here it is right here, you know, when the glory comes, I had no strength left in me. And the glory was so strong, he says, my vigor was turned to frailty. My strength was turned to frailty. He felt like his whole body just went mush, <laughs> right? I retained no strength, yet I heard the sound of, the, of his words. While I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face. He, that glory realm came on him, and he kind of fell into a trance. He went into a spiritual experience, right, with my face to the ground. Verse 10, suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees. There it is right there, the tremble. Ooh. <laughs> I love the tremble. Let's me know God is in this place. Right, tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. That's reverence, right? Verse eleven. And he said to me, "O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you." Say sent. See, there it is, right there. They're sent. They have to be sent, and we, you guys, are a part of that sending, right? Do you know that angels are activated by your faith? Do you know angels are sent forth when you decide to move in faith? Why? Because the Bible says faith without works is dead. The Bible says, you know, be not deceived. You know, whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. God has a holy obligation to make you reap what you sow and do in faith. Right? He has a holy obligation. He has no choice because God will keep his word. He exalts his word above his name, the Bible says, right? He has no choice. He's not a man that he should lie. If God said that if you moved in faith, if you sowed generously in faith, the angels will be sent. The, the heaven will be activated on your behalf. There will be movement, amen? And this is what's happening here, you guys. We're going to get into... In a minute, okay, how this warfare that ensued, you guys all know this chapter. You all know this story. The warfare ensued, and I want you to see here how Daniel was directly a part of them being sent and staying sent and keeping on coming, right? Verse 11, he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words I speak to you. Stand upright, for I have been sent to you. Say sent. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. There it is again, man. Another thing that I want you to know about the fear of the Lord is the fear of the Lord is a, it's a symptom. It's a sign that God's manifest glory is manifesting, right? When there's no fear of the Lord, when there's nobody trembling, then it's not really manifest, Right? It should cause some kind of reaction. When the glory of God really comes, there's a reaction, right? I'm telling you, man, I, I get some of the craziest reactions sometimes when the glory comes into some of my meetings. I, I told you guys this last week or, or the week before when I was doing revival meetings. I've had people break out in fist fights right in the middle of my meeting. And at the same time, gold being poured out, supernatural oil, people getting up out of wheelchairs, people getting hip replacements from the Holy Ghost, people blind eyes popping open, deaf ears. I had one guy one time, you guys, that actually got gold all over him, and he's the one who started the fist fight. I kid you not. Why? Because light came in contact with darkness, and there was a war that ensued. That's the sword. The living word, the sword that comes in the glory, it cuts, it divides, and people have to make a choice, right? And some people don't want to let go of their demons. <laughs> they don't want to let go of their stuff, right? So they allow that thing to take over, right? They allow that thing to, you know, go through them, you know? There's other people, though, that turn to the Lord, you know? I mean, like that, I remember that, you know, the demoniac, the story of the demoniac, the Gadarenes, you know. He came and fell at the feet and worshipped Jesus, right? He came in contact with the glory, and he turned to Jesus. He came and worshipped, right? 
And then even in that moment, he was so bound that even when he chose in his heart to worship Jesus, the devil still spoke through him. We are legion, for we are many, right? But he still, that man, came in contact with the glory and still came and fell at Jesus' feet and worshiped, right? So that's what happens when the glory comes, you guys. The wheat becomes separated from the tares. God does a cleansing. He does a separating, right? He brings forth the manifestation of Genesis 1-4. God divided the light from the darkness. He divided the light from the darkness, and he's been dividing the light from the darkness ever since. <laughs> I know I'm speaking prophetically. For some people, you're like, what? <laughs> but seriously, but God, in his wisdom and in his love, chose a lot of time for that fully to manifest, right? He could have just came down, you guys, and just separated in a moment, in an instant, could have bound the devil, right, in a moment, in an instant. He could have. So the great cosmic questions always asked by people, if God's so loving, if God's so good, why did he allow evil to endure? Because evil has a foothold in people that God loves. And God wants to give them time to repent. He wants to give America time to turn, right? So that's the reason, that's the wisdom behind his tarrying. Amen? So it says here in verse 12, now, I, I wanted you to see that. It mentions here in just a few verses, you guys, the trembling, the fear of the Lord, all that stuff. Where the fear of the Lord is present, There's, it, it's a sign and a symptom that the glory is being manifest, right? Verse 12, and it's not just the fear of the Lord. It's all the ma manifestations. It's miracles too. It's signs. It's wonders, all that stuff, right? Verse 12, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel. <laughs> it's like, you know he's afraid when the first thing that, you know, one of the first things that comes out of the angel's mouth is, do not fear, right? You see that over and over again, you know? Remember when Gabriel visited Zacharias, you know? Do not fear, fear not, you know? Be not afraid. Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand. What did Daniel do? He set his heart. One of the things that activates the angels is faithfulness. You want to write that down? Faithfulness. And faithfulness is a part of faith. The person that sets their heart to something, the person that is faithful, the person that hears from the Lord, sets their heart to that thing, sets their hand to the plow and does not work back, look back, those are the ones that receive the kingdom. Those are the ones that the angels keep working for, right? Why? Because there's a direct connection, you guys, with your faith. Right? That's not to say that God can't sovereignly send them, you know. But oftentimes it's in it's somehow it's connected. Either your grandparents, pray, you know, prayers or you know whatever. There's some sort of a connection. These are spiritual principles here. But Daniel set himself. Okay, he set his heart to understand. Okay, and this angel's telling Daniel from the first day. How long did Daniel fast? Twenty-one days, three weeks. And when did this appearance happen? It was on the 24th day, right? But this angel says, wait a minute, the, 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 the answer was granted. God granted the answer the moment you set your heart, the moment you began to pray the prayer. And what is that? That's the finished work right there. That's the finished work doctrine right there. It's done. It's done. It's done, yet it's happening, right? And your faithfulness here, guy, guys, your faith, Okay, is directly tied to it fully manifesting. Right? To humble yourself before your God. It takes humility, man, to, to, to move in faith. It does, man. Your words were heard. I want to tell you guys today that your prayers have been heard. Amen? I want to tell you guys today that God has seen your sacrificial giving. God has seen your acts of faith, amen, and he's at work. I want to encourage you tonight, hang in there. Hang in there. Give the angels something to work with, right? Keep working with them. Keep working with God. Keep working with the heavenly realm, okay, until the thing fully comes through, amen? It says, I have come, what? Because of your words. Well, wait a minute. I thought it was the word of God. I thought it was God who did it. I thought it was Jesus who did it, right? I thought all the burden and responsibility was on God. No, the angel says, the reason why I finally got here was because of your words. How many of you guys know 
then in Mark 11, 23, and 24, that our words and our confession is directly tied to our faith. It says, and you will say to this mountain, somebody say say, you will say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and you shall have whatsoever you shall say. And whatsoever things you desire, when you pray them, believe that you receive them. Just like Daniel. Believe that the moment you begin praying, the angels are sent. Believe that the moment you begin praying, that God has answered the prayer. But he says, what sort of things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. What does it say then? It says, then you shall have them. All right? There's other factors involved with the when. Somebody say when. But our responsibility is not the when. Our responsibility is to believe that we receive and to stay faithful until we see it with our own eyes. Amen? There's some people that have not been faithful with America, have not been faithful with what God has spoken over America, with what God has proclaimed America's destiny in. And they've switched their tune over the last 10 years. They've switched their confession, right? But I believe that God has promised awakening. How about you guys? I believe that God has promised revival. I believe in those, those, those visions, over 100 visions that Paul Cain had. Joel's army. Joel's army. And that will go from the, the, the churches you know, to, the, to the stadiums, the stadiums to the fields. Right here in this country, you guys, I'm believing for a full restoration of what God initiated with men like Paul Cain, William Branham. A. Allen, that whole generation. We're literally at any given time, you know, within 100 square miles in this country at one time, you could find some sort of miracle healing tent revival going on in which the blind are seeing, the deaf are hearing, the w- people are getting up out of the wheelchairs. There was one meeting that Jack Coe did, over 100 wheelchairs in one meeting, you guys. That was in this nation. That was not in Africa. That was in this nation. You guys, we've been robbed of something in this nation, Right? And, and when the enemy is caught, he must restore, restore sevenfold. So you know what my confession is? It's devil, you have to restore the voice of healing seven times greater. Seven times greater. We have to have seven times as much in America. Not Africa, America. Amen? And um, what, what happens is people change their tune when a certain amount of time goes by. Things get worse. It seems to get worse it see, America seems to be growing more evil, seems to be going more over to the dark side of the force, <laughs> right? And then they changed their tune. But what did Daniel do, friends? He set his heart. He set his mind. What did he set his heart and his mind to? To what God had spoken. What was he doing? He had read the prophecy of Jeremiah. He'd read the prophecy. He'd read the word of the Lord. I will restore Israel. I will bring them out of their captivity. They will not be in Babylon forever. He aligned himself with the word of the Lord, and when it didn't happen right away, he didn't choose his, to, uh, change his tune. He didn't change his confession. He stayed with what God was saying. Are we going to stay with what God's saying, right? No matter what we see. Remember Abraham, man? He went through that. He had to, cha- he had to keep his confession. He had to keep his faith. And there were times where, you know, he, he, he changed his perspective a little bit. I mean, it happens sometimes. And he said, well, maybe God will, will, will bring about the promise, you know, through my servant, right? Through my servant. Maybe he's supposed to have my child for me, right? And then he said, well, well maybe God will bring it through, you know, hey, what was her name? Hagar, right? Maybe he'll bring it through Hagar. Maybe that's how we're going to get it done. And he birthed an Ishmael, right? What happened? He got shaken with the test of time, right? I want to encourage you tonight. Don't be shaken with the test of time. Stay true to the word. Set your heart, amen, with what God has spoken to you. He will deliver. He must deliver. He's promised it, amen? He's not a man that he should lie. But what is it? Verse 13, what is it that God reveals to Daniel? See, God gives what? Daniel, understanding, right? He set his heart to understanding. God gave him understanding when he passed the trial through the trial of time. He says, this is what was happening, Daniel. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me 
for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Okay, so there's not just, you know, Gabriel involved here, but there's there's Michael involved, you know, there's there's an incredible, you know, there's not just one angel, there's many different angelic hosts involved here, right? And it says in verse 14, now I have come to make you understand. There's that word again, understand. <laughs> understand stand, standing comes to those who passes the test of time. Understanding will come to those who don't give up, who don't turn away. That, are, that stay faithful, that will keep praying, that will keep pressing in. What did God say in James chapter 1? If you desire wisdom, let him ask of the Lord, right? You ask and then you wait until the wisdom comes, amen? And it says, I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. For The vision refers to many days yet to come. And when he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face towards the ground and became speechless. And suddenly one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. And then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me. I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now nor in any breath is left in me. Verse 18, Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes, be strong. Mm. Remember how when Jesus went through his fast, the angels came and ministered strength to him? Right? Oh, that's good. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened. Oh, amen. And said, let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. And then he said, do not, uh, do you, do, excuse me, do you know why I have come to you? And now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. Wow, so the battle wasn't even over. He just kind of snuck in, you know, and like, you know, hey, I'm giving you this message. Stay in there. Hang in there, right? So what is that, you know? It's like you've, you've received a breakthrough, you know? God's done a breakthrough. You, God's done a miracle in your life, you know? But there's more breakthrough to come, right? There's more breakthrough to come. So hang in there. But God will strengthen you along the way, amen? Just at the time when you feel like your strength is zapped, like you feel like your strength, your vigor within you has been turned to frailty. I mean, that's what he was feeling, you know? God strengthened him with a word, amen? Be strengthened with a word tonight. Hang in there. Keep going, Amen? I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. Oh, what is that? The angels speak in scripture. <laughs> I like that. No one upholds me against these except Michael, your prince. Do you guys see that? The main thing I wanted you to see, though, from that scripture, though, there's lots of points to hit on. You know, I'm purposely not diving into them all, and I'm wrapping it up. You guys all right? I'm wrapping it up. The thing I wanted you to see from that is Daniel was directly involved, not just in the angel being sent, not just in the angels working on his behalf, but for the manifestation coming to full fruit, coming to fruition, the thing popping in the natural. And I'm not going to read them tonight, but just for your reference, if you're taking notes tonight, some other scriptures, Acts chapter 10, we see this with uh, Cornelius. Um, you know, I've already referred to it several times. It's such a powerful scripture. The angel came to him and said that your prayers and your giving, your generous giving, has gone up to the Lord as a memorial before the Lord. And what happened? The heavens opened. An angel was sent, gave him this message, and then Peter fell into a trance, right, and received this vision. The Lord told him to go to Cornelius' house, and it ended with his whole family getting saved. And the gospel coming to the Gentiles. There's a direct connection, you guys, with the angelic and our finances and our prayers. Amen? You see it right there in Scripture. So there's another, there's another point. If you're taking notes tonight, what are some things that we, that we give the angels to work with, give something for the angels to work with? We, we, we give them our faith to work with. Our actions are directly tied to our faith because if faith without works is dead, right? So there's that too. Some of you need to get to work with what God's told you to do. Amen? If you would get to moving, if you would get to working with that thing, it would help to activate heaven on your behalf because then the faith, sort of what I call the faith mechanism is moving, right? The life that's in the faith is moving. Um, but uh, another one, another point is finances. We can't deny it. It's in the scripture, you guys. I shared a testimony earlier. 
You know, I had an angelic visitation, one of the first ones I ever had. In fact, the first one I ever had when I first met Todd in person had to do with the angelic and finances and revival. You know, I had a lot of questions about that, you know, when I came out of that scripture. I said, because my mentality up to that point, you guys, that revivals were all sovereign. They were all based on God, not man. That's not true. It's not. How many of you guys have read the stories of William Branham? Anybody? Has anybody heard some of the amazing testimonies? Well, this is what, um, and I'm bringing it to a close, I promise. <laughs> this is what Gordon Lindsay said about William Branham. Gordon Lindsay, the founder of Christ for the Nations, an incredible institute for the Lord, the author of the Voice of Healing magazine back in the day, um, he said this. He said he never saw when William Branham had a vision that it was not 100% accurate. 100%. That, I don't know about you guys, but that's an incredible gift right there. When you have someone that can get up and say, thus saith the Lord, and it happened every time according to the vision, that's an incredible gift, right? But there were times, you guys, I just got done reading this big book about him. There were times where William Branham could not move in the miraculous, could not move in his gift. He said there were places that he would go in the U.S., okay, where he says the faith of the people was so powerful. Okay, these are in the good stories right here. He said the faith that, that was coming out of the people, that was coming out of, you know, we're all, you know, spiritual stones being built up in a house to contain the glory, right? There really is a truth about that. He says the faith was so strong in the meeting that he saw it in open vision form as like a milky cloud, a haze hanging over the congregation. And he was sucked into the visions, he couldn't help but just be sucked into visions and miracles all night long. Those nights that that happened, he couldn't even preach. It's like Todd Bentley describes, right? When the glory's stronger, it becomes harder to preach. It just the, It's like the people's faith make up this atmosphere, help make up this atmosphere, and it activates the angelic. It activates heaven, man. It's incredible. There are other places, you guys, that he would go, absolutely no faith. It was as if, and he was a prophet, so he could discern this. He had a gift of discernment. He could discern almost like everybody in the crowd like this. We'll see. You know, we'll see if the prophet. And the visions wouldn't break. He would see them to like start to form, but they were hazy. He couldn't see them. He couldn't make out the details. Isn't that incredible? It's just like Jesus, Mark chapter 6. He could do no mighty miracles because of their unbelief. Right? I'm telling you guys, we have more to do with revival than what we think. We have more to do with the destiny of this nation than what we think. I'm telling you. I saw that in Africa. I learned that firsthand in Africa, the, the importance of the people's faith. I saw the Lord open up the heavens and move in an incredible way when it first broke out in Africa. Darren was there. Is there anybody else besides Darren and me that was in Africa? Anybody? You were there, right? How far into it did you get there when you actually you got there? Three weeks? I was there the first week. The second week, I went on to Johannesburg, and I preached in Todd's place at another meeting. I took a meeting that he couldn't respond to, and we had supernatural fire caught on camera at that meeting. Actually caught on camera. It's on our website. It's pretty cool. Um, but you guys, this is what I saw. This is what the Lord taught me in that revival, taught me firsthand dynamics of revival. I saw... God, okay, opened up the heavens to a degree. Okay, there was a degree. But then I saw it was as if the heavens ripped open so much wider when the Muslims and the Hindus were storming the altars, storming the building. I saw it firsthand, you guys. I saw that revival go, just explode off, just blow up, you guys, the first week, okay, and it had directly to do with the response of the people. So I actually had someone ask me earlier today on Periscope, why don't we see the same things in America that we see in Africa? It's because we don't see the same response out of the body of Christ in America. Amen? And this isn't meant to be a condemning word. I want to give you, this is meant to be a teaching. This is meant to give you keys about how you can greater cooperate with the heavenly realm, greater cooperate with the angelic during this time to see a greater release of heaven on earth in your life. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I want my kids raised in the glory. 
I want my kid, my grandkids raised in the glory. <laughs> Amen? I want to live in the glory. I want to have a ministry in the glory. So there's Acts chapter 10. You see a direct connection between the angelic being released, salvation, souls, miracle, the harvest, and giving, the giving of believers and the prayers of believers, right? So that's why I want to always invite you into that with what's happening in Pakistan. I want to invite you into that in the offering because I understand this. And then you see in Revelations 8, you see another amazing scripture. It says that the angel brought this incense, right, to the altar. And it was the prayers of the saints. And what happened? He, the Bible says he combined it with much incense. He brought the prayers, the incense, which was the prayer of the saints, and he combined it with much incense. What was the much incense? It's all these other elements I'm talking about. It's not just prayer, but giving, I believe, lets off an incredible incense, an incredible aroma, right? I believe that, that sacrifice, sacrifice, work, people that are willing to go for it, people that are willing to lay their lives down, people that are willing to lay their bodies on the altar, right, even in fasting, I believe that goes up as an incense as well. And that's, a, that's Romans 12. Bless you, buddy. That's Romans 12, you guys. Presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pure, and acceptable before the Lord, right? And I've been quoting that scripture a lot. The Bible says that God smelt Noah's sacrifice, right? Because his heart was behind it, it was translated as spiritual substance, you guys. So there you see another scripture in Revelation 8 of the angels working with these multiple substances that are coming up out of the earth, Right? And the last scripture I'll leave you with, go ahead and stand to your feet, if I could have Darren come. <clears throat> the last scripture I'll leave you with is Exodus 36. One of my favorite scriptures. The Bible says the people were stirred up by the Lord to give. They gave so much, Moses had to stop them from giving. Talk about the glory. Talk about a, you know, a, a spirit of generosity being poured out. When, you guys, when the glory is poured out, people give too much. <laughs> right? People give too much. People give all that they have. It's Acts chapter 4, man. They sold everything they have and came and laid it down at the apostles' feet. Why? It's not because they were fiscally dumb. It was because the glory was being poured out, right? And when the glory is being poured out, you want to give it all, man. You want to give it all. And God blessed them. God took care of them. God multiplied it back to them. There was revival, man. But what did the Bible say in Exodus 36? It says that when the people gave, what happened? You guys remember what happened? The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came upon this guy named Bezaliel and his assistant Eholiab. Eholiab, I'm terribly butchering the, the Hebrew names. I'm a, I'm a lover of Jesus, uh, not a scholar. <laughs> but the Bible says in direct connection, you guys, with their giving, their generous giving, over and beyond giving, the anointing was released. The Bible says the spirit of wisdom and understanding filled these men. The spirit of the Lord filled them in all manner of craftsmanship and workmanship. And did you, did you know that to this day, scientists have no idea how Bezaliel made the menorah? You know that? They know that the menorah was beat by hand with hand tools from one piece of gold. One piece. It is physically impossible to do that in the earth, right? Without machines or some sort of technology. He beat it from one piece of gold with his bare hands and a hammer. Why? The anointing to build the house of God was released upon the people when the people of God gave, right? I'm telling you, man, that it's one of the most... Uh, incredible revelations right there is that when the body of Christ is, is, is giving, okay, when the body of Christ is, is generous, the way we're called to be generous, God will multiply it back to you. It's a promise, right? God even said to Malachi, try me in this. Try me in this and see if I don't open up the windows of heaven. What is that? Open heavens. See if I don't open up heaven and pour you back a blessing you can't contain, Right? That's exactly what the angel uh, told me when I had that visitation, you guys, that I'm not just going to have my expenses paid for, but I'm going to have more than enough. I'm going to have overflow. Amen? That's how God works. That's how God blesses. Amen? He's not just going to make you, you know, come back even. He's not just going to make come back to you, you know, what you gave. You're going to have more. 
it's going to be multiplied back to you guys in many ways. Oh, hallelujah. But I'm just going to pray a prayer right now over you guys, okay? And uh, we're going to close the meeting, and we'll be back tomorrow night. Sort of the vision I have for tomorrow night, you guys, is um, I want to get as many of the students involved as I can. I think we're going to do a fire tunnel tomorrow night and just have a great Holy Ghost time. We're going to continue to pray for miracles. I want to try to get the students more involved in, in some of the words of knowledge and whatnot. But, you guys, the miracles are going to continue to increase. Healing is going to continue to flow. God is good. So I want to encourage you once again, if you know somebody that's sick, if you know somebody that needs a touch in the body, please get them here. Amen. If you know somebody that just needs a touch from God, get them here. Amen. God's going to do work. And then once again, Saturday at 7, we're going to have the worship night. Uh, you're not going to want to miss that. That's going to be incredible. So, Lord, we just thank you for this word tonight. Lord, we thank you um, for this empowering word, Lord God, that we're never left without, Lord God. We thank you that truly you have heard our prayers. Truly you have heard our hearts, Lord God. You've heard our hearts, Lord God. And the moment we set, Lord God, our hearts to obey the word and to be faithful, I thank you that you began moving on our behalf. Lord, you began moving on our behalf before we were even born, Lord God. I thank you right now, Lord God, tonight that heaven is at work on our behalf. And I thank you, Lord God, you have given the grace. You have poured out the grace, the spirit of grace, Lord God, for us to endure. For us to endure all the way from revelation to manifestation. And I'm asking, Lord God, for that acceleration in the glory. I'm asking, Lord God, for manifestation in Jesus' name. Things that have been prayed about for years. Things that have been sowed into by faith for years. Things that have been worked at hard for years. I'm asking, Lord God, for a harvest in those areas. Lord Jesus, you turn to your disciples in John's, John 4 and you said, do not say that the harvest is yet to come. Do not say that the harvest is month off, months off. Look up. Look up for the, the fields are white to harvest now. Lord, I pray that we would have that heavenly mentality, that we would look up, that we would see our lives from heaven's reality, from heaven's perspective, and we would declare right now, come on, saints, just declare with me right now, over my circumstances, over my situation, over my family, over all the prophetic words, over my business, God, what you spoke to me and you said you would do through my business, I declare over those circumstances now, it's white to harvest now. We call forth the harvest now over those things, Lord God. We call forth the harvest in our children now, Lord God. And Lord, right now, I'm asking for a harvest, Lord God, over every last dime that has been sown into the gospel. I'm asking for a quick response, a quick harvest, Lord God, a quick reaping, Lord God, from that financial glory realm. Release your angels, Lord God. Release your angels, Lord God. Release the ministry of heaven, those ministering spirits that are sent forth on our behalf, Lord God, to work for us, Lord God, and to work with us. Let them be sent forth in Jesus' name. We thank you that they are being sent forth, Lord. And we just determine, Lord God, we purpose in our hearts. We set our hearts as Daniel did, Lord God, to be faithful, Lord God to hang in there, to keep praying, to keep fasting, to keep giving. And we declare, Lord God, that we shall see the manifestation of the promise that you have released in our lives. Do you believe it tonight, saints? Do you believe it tonight, saints? If you do, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that word with all my heart. And I want to hear back the stories from you. Amen. I want to hear, hear back the stories as you begin harvesting, as you begin reaping. Amen? Hallelujah. Once again, as always, these, these altars are open. Um, if you need to do some extra business with God right now, you can. Um, but if not, bless you guys. Thank you for coming tonight. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Each service is different. You know, there's a different anointing. There's a different flow for each service. I'm uh, going to be fasting and praying tomorrow for you guys.